I'm Larry Elder. This is The Dave Rubin Show. Obviously, I'm not Dave Rubin. Um, I'm more likely known as the black face of white supremacy by an LA Times columnist <laughs> whose initials are Erica D. Smith. Oops. Uh, Dave has been gone for an entire month, and my job, great deal of pressure, is to go over every major event that's happened in the last month and get his reaction to it. But Dave, first tell us what you've been doing for the last month. Well, first off, Larry, it's good to see you, my you too. friend. I it's appreciate, been a while. It has been a little while. Last I saw you was in California. Last time you saw me, we were both Californians. Now, <laughs> now you're stuck. <laughs> I'll turn out the light, though, when I leave. I am free in the free state of Florida, right. in Miami, where we're at right now. And I should mention real quick that we are debuting the local studio here in Miami right at this very moment. Right. So you're hosting the first show right here in the local studio. Um, I have been gone for a month. Oh, but real quick, your intro was very nice there because I okay. like that you had to say that you were not me in case people thought, you know, I yeah. go away for a month, I can get very tan. That's right. Next thing you know, and we often wear very similar. Wherever you go, people go, aren't you, aren't you Larry Elder? <laughs> Which one are you again? <laughs> anyway, yes, I have been gone for a month 100%. I know nothing that has now, gone you on. Now, understand. You don't I, believe I, it. I, people I, don't I, believe I asked it. David, uh, you know nothing. You didn't walk by a TV set. You didn't cut on the radio. You didn't pick up a newspaper. You know nothing at all what's going on I know. the last, last whole month. So this is the sixth year that I've done this off the grid thing. And the mm -hmm. first year that I did it, it was jo it was a joke, really. It was right. just like, ah, let me just put my phone away for a month, see what happens. And then it was, it was pretty great. And, you know, I get to sort of reset my brain and right. think about things a little bit differently. And, you know, we, we're in this political thing. It's burning hot all the time. Right. And I, I wanted to just see if I could cool it off a little bit. And then it's really been great over these years. Now... This year, obviously, was a little different than my other years where I've gone to the rainforest of Mexico or to Bora Bora and disappeared and stared off into the edge of the world. You've got some big news for us. Uh, I am now a father, Larry Elder. Right. That's yeah. right. Uh, Justin was born uh, wee early hours of August 6th. He was supposed to, the due date was the 22nd. So I thought we were going to go off the grid and we'd have a couple of weeks right. and we'll enjoy ourselves and, you know, we'll eat good food and we'll go to the beach and everything will be great. But five days into off the grid thing, we got the call, and Justin is here. I'm a dad. It's been it's been something, you know. It's uh, I've been peed on more this month than at any other time in my life. This time, literally. <laughs> if you took all the other this times time, I was this peed time, on, this time literally. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, um, but it's been it's been great, you know. I'm a, I'm a little tired. Well, I got I got to ask you about that. Yeah. Um, uh, I have friends, of course, who have kids. I do not. My brothers do. And everybody, everybody, everybody tells me it's changed their life instantly in ways that they never imagined. So the same question for you. How yeah. to change your life? What did you think would happen? What has happened? You know, it's weird because so usually I feel very refreshed when I come back, right? So I have a month off and I feel refreshed. I don't feel refreshed right now. I feel I feel renewed, which is different, right? Like I don't feel refreshed like I got a lot of sleep right. and I just like I'm like fully like bam, let's go. I feel more like I actually feel I feel the responsibility of what we do is is heavier on me. Mm -hmm. you know? Like now when I look at him, it sounds corny. It really does sound corny. Um, but I feel like, wow, I'm not just fighting now right. to save a world for myself or for David or for you or for Nina. It's like now I have this kid who I want to make the world as good as possible for him. So he has been surrounded by an awful lot of love. We've had a lot of family my folks, David's parents, sisters, brothers, uncles, cousins, my sister who lives in Miami had a baby a few days later. It's just been baby palooza and up all night. And you know, you gotta feed these things I, like I every heard, two I hours. Heard, Do you heard, know about yeah, this? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a lot. Um, so, it's, so it was easy to be off the grid this time. The only thing that was different because I was basically locked at home except every now and again, someone would tell me you gotta go get diapers, you gotta go get butt paste, you gotta get whatever, you know, aquaphor, blah, blah, blah. Um, it was very easy to be off the grid, except I did have my phone this time. So I, I wasn't on social media, but usually I just locked my phone away. But this time in case there was an emergency or, uh, you know, I had to go pick something up or I was getting a lot of phone, you know, congratulations mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So it was a little different this year. Um, but I feel good and I feel ready to be back in on it. Well, well two more things before yeah. we get back in on that. Um, I heard a rumor that uh, your son may have a companion at some point. Uh, yeah, in, in, we got in the near future. <laughs> I'm not quite sure where I heard that. Yeah, we got another one coming in the middle of October, supposedly, uh, due October 14th. But I have a feeling he's going to come a little bit early, so we'll do it all again. 
But you got to say, don't I, I look pretty good considering. You know what I you, mean? Because, you, all, you always look good. All, but all my friends, every time they have a baby, you see them like three days later, and, and the men aren't the ones that carry the child. I don't know if you know that. But somehow the men well, all I'm, look horrible. I'm not horrible. a biologist, but You're I have not. heard that. The second one is this. But the men all look horrible, right? Because nobody's sleeping, reading. So I, it was my responsibility this month. David and and my mom and his mom, they were handling a lot of like the nitty gritty. And the, I right. changed a couple diapers. And right. yes, I truly was peed on. He pooped on me several times. It's a lot, right? But um, I felt if I could keep our life in order, like make sure we were like sitting down to eat and make sure the house was clean and all of that stuff and going to Home Depot and blah, blah, blah. Second, so, yes, another second major question. Yes. Uh, what exactly is butt paste? What? I haven't <laughs> heard that term before. <laughs> you never not, heard about butt sure, paste? Not sure I want to know. Almost everything I've been discussing in the last week is butt paste. If, if a kid gets um, diaper rash, there are many treatment options available. Butt paste is it's that's the brand name and is, it's is old, that what it's called? It's called butt paste and it's old school and right. it comes in this little jar and it's just okay. a paste for the butt. That's more information than I think I want to know about. So Larry, did anything happen? Now, did I now. miss I, so I honestly I have no idea. The one wait, let me just say one thing. So the one yeah. I don't know anything other than he was born on uh, we went to the hospital on the fifth, he was born early morning on the sixth. When I got to the hospital a lot of the nurses there and staff knew me and, and security people and other people. And a bunch of people kept saying, you don't know about the thing? You don't, like they were like kind of jumping at me. So I feel like something happened at the beginning, but so I truly have no idea. Is that how they phrased it? You don't know the thing? Is that how they put Cause, it? Well, Cause, I cause, made cause, it very cause clear Because they knew that they weren't supposed to tell you anything, so. And everyone that I went up to when they were trying to say hi to me or take a selfie, I was like, I was like, just remember, right. I, I don't know anything. So yeah, everybody was respectful of that. Mm. Even when I saw people, when I'd go to Whole Foods or I went to Home Depot or whatever, People would be like, so you still don't know? You still don't know? Wow. And yeah, nobody blew it. Nobody well, blew it. So uh, I know I, nothing. I have, so I, have, I have, as you know, your staff assembled this long list of things <sighs> Lordy, in, Lordy. in chronological order uh, the last month. Uh, but something happened that is so big, I think we ought to start with that. Okay. Um, but before I start, I want to say this. There's a lot of pressure uh, on, on the person sitting in for you to ask you stuff because how the news is delivered will shape how you perceive it, mm -hmm. which is why we're so angry about the left-wing media, CNN, MSNB, Hee Haw, ABC, NBC, CBS. Uh, they hate Trump, they don't like Republicans, they're happy with high taxes, they're happy with soft borders, and through that filter comes their news. Uh, I'm a Trump guy. Uh, I believe that there's two-tiered systems of justice. Uh, I believe Trump was probably the worst treated president in, in, in my lifetime, and it is through that filter that I see everything. So. I feel a responsibility to give you the news in a fair and in balanced way so you can react to it properly as opposed to reacting to my own biases. So I sense you're about to tell me something about Trump. Is he running? That, well, uh, that, that's not what I'm going to tell you, but I'm confident he is going to run. I, I'd be shocked oh, if he oh, didn't okay, run. Okay, okay. So that I, I, don't, I don't know anything any more okay. than anybody else knows about that. But there I thought was, maybe he announced. But the there was, there was okay. an FBI raid at Mar-a-Lago. Uh, a warrant was taken out. Uh, a warrant is uh, supported by an affidavit. Uh, and a judge, a uh, U.S. district judge, his name is Bruce Reinhardt, executed a warrant. Uh, and at 9.30 or so in the morning, uh, around, I think it was the 8th or so of this month of, of August, about 9 or 10 FBI agents swarmed in on Mar-a-Lago and went through the Trump residence and removed about 15 boxes of information. At first, we didn't know what they removed. Uh, Trump wanted the list of stuff revealed. He wanted the warrant uh, unsealed and revealed. Uh, and then he wanted the underlying affidavit unsealed and published, all of which ultimately happened. These are all unprecedented for the warrant to, re to be revealed, let alone the underlying, underlying affidavit, and that's to protect the, in, in, the investigation. Uh, that's why they don't want it revealed. And apparently- Wait, wait can I pause you for one mm -hmm. second just to understand the story? So, so they raid, does it immediately break that they did it or did people find out um, later? Like, did people know that day? It, it, it's hard to say when it broke, but it broke, it broke fairly quickly. Yeah. Keep in mind, Trump has uh, cameras everywhere. And, and he Trump, lives Trump, Trump, he Trump lives was, there, was, right? Trump was not there. Right. But Trump he, was not there, uh, Melania was not there, he was elsewhere, but he was watching the raid apparently uh, on video, geez. and that video has not been released yet. But he was watching it. Uh, his son Eric found out about it, contacted his dad, and told his dad it was going on. When this happened, exactly, I can't tell you, but the news broke within hours or so of this of this raid. So they basically just busted in. If he if he's not there, I mean, that's right. They 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 went in. Um, they were armed, um, and uh, around eight or nine agents came there, and um, this was never happened before. 
And based on the revealing of the warrant, revealing of the underlying affidavit, revealing of commentary that I, of people I respect, he is accused, Trump, uh, of having probable cause to violate the Espionage Act by removing information pertaining to national secrets, national security from the White House when he left the White House. Uh, he's accused of um, violating an act that uh, prohibits you from destroying sensitive government documents, and he's uh, and he's accused, at least there's probable cause, that he committed obstruction of justice. Apparently, 15 months ago or so, there was some back and forth about documents that he removed, and some of them were re returned, and it appeared that they were voluntarily, they meaning uh, the FBI, the National Archives, working with Trump lawyers about what he took, and normally when a president leaves, the president often takes documents that are perceived to be documents he shouldn't have removed, and mm -hmm. you work it out. Right. This was not worked out. And a lot of people feel that there's a double standard here. It should have been worked out. Uh, Garland gave a statement, unusual, after this happened, because half the country was, was, was on fire, not on fire physically, but just angry, and said that um, we always try to get these things resolved in the least invasive fashion, and he suggested that Donald Trump was being difficult, uh, refusing to turn over documents he should have turned over, so we had no choice but to do this. And God, this sounds like just such an extension of all the stupidity. So, uh, wait, so they're accusing him of taking a bunch of stuff, so they bust in there, they take the documents, have the documents been released? When you say bust in, I don't think they knocked down a door, but I think they knocked on the door at 9.30. Uh, nobody got a heads up. Trump's, two of Trump's lawyers were there, but they were not allowed in to witness the search, but they were at, in, in the house when it happened. They weren't allowed in to witness the they search? Were, no. So they can just basically, the FBI, is this how it, it's supposed to operate? They can just basically get into your house, take all your stuff, no one's allowed to witness when, what when there's When doing? there's a warrant allowing you to search certain places, and uh, apparently they even searched Melania's wardrobe. Okay, so I would imagine uh, a lot of people are not happy about this. A lot of people I would imagine very, Trump is fighting this. I mean, are, what's going on? A lot like, of people are very upset. Uh, Trump uh, is now demanded that they appoint a, um, a, a marshal, an independent marshal, to go over all of the documents uh, underlying the warrant and to make sure that uh, what was done by the FBI is on the up and up. That's also unusual. So Trump has filed a motion to have an independent third party uh, take a look at everything the FBI did on that day to determine whether or not they should have done it. Man, they really don't want this guy running for president. Like that, that what else could this possibly be about? Like, does he really have documents there that he wasn't well, supposed that's, to take? Well, that's or? unclear. And I tell yeah. you somebody that I look at a lot when these kinds of things happen, because I think he's fair, and that's uh, Andrew McCarthy on mm -hmm, Fox. Mm -hmm. He's not a, a Trump guy, but he doesn't hate Trump. And he's a former U.S. attorney. Uh, and he wrote a very long piece uh, that came out a couple of days ago in the National Review and said, Trump probably took documents he shouldn't have taken. Trump, pro Trump probably was uncooperative. Trump probably made public statements about whether he was cooperative, when in fact he probably wasn't. Uh, and there may be an indictment forthcoming, uh, accusing him of violating the Espionage Act, violating the act that I said earlier that forbids you from destroying government documents and accusing him of obstruction of justice. He now believes that there may be an indictment coming. Alan Dershowitz, angry about the whole things, feels that there won't be an indictment, feels that this is double standard. Elder feels it's double standard right. for a couple of reasons. Hillary, as you know, clearly violated the Espionage Act. She had an unsecured had a server, server yeah. in her basement. Bleach, bleach. On which she sent and received information that was classified, denied that she did, turns out she did, and then later on she said that um, she never sent or received information that was stamped as classified. She lied and said, and, and turns out she did. And as you know, James Comey did this big presentation and talked about how careless she was, how reckless she was, but at the last minute he says, but she lacked the intent. Right. Well, the relevant part of the statute, Dave, does not require intent. <laughs> And so a whole right. bunch of us, right. and you I'm a lawyer. You can't just do a bunch a of lawyer. bad yeah. stuff and not have intent. And then you have okay. uh, Eric Holder. Eric right. Holder was under a subpoena to turn over documents pertaining to Fast and Furious. That was a gun walking thing that um, for some reason the government did, presumably to trace where these guns were going and to bust the cartels for buying these guns. Well, the guns got loose, and at least one of them was used to kill a uh, Border Patrol agent. And so uh, Eric Holder was subpoenaed by Congress to turn over the documents. He didn't do them, didn't do it. He was found in criminal contempt of Congress, the first only AG to be to done to have done so. Republicans took him to court, and over a course of five years, Holder was able to negotiate back and forth. Ultimately, turned over the documents. We think 
Um, and, and okay, so um, wait, wait, wait. I get the double standard, right? Like, well, one more, one no more. Doubt. Sandy, yeah. Sandy Berger, remember yeah. that one? Uh, that was he was Bill Clinton's national uh, security yeah, advisor, yeah. and uh, Congress was conducting hearings on whether or not Bill Clinton, this is before nine, after 9/11, might have known something or should have done something to have stopped it. So Berger goes to the National Archives, steals documents, oh, right. stuffs them in his pants, gets busted, and got a slap on the wrist. And so these are just three examples where, in my opinion, if we were being consistent, uh, they should have been punished far more harshly. Hillary wasn't punished at all. And as you pointed out, destroyed a bunch of uh, documents that were under subpoena, used bleach bit, uh, bleach bit yeah. and got rid of all of them, and, and nothing happened to her. So even if Donald Trump, my long way of saying, even if Trump <laughs> took documents he shouldn't have taken, even if he's uncooperative, how is it you came down on him with a hammer and those guys got a pass? Right, so okay, so the double standard thing, that's just standard stuff, right? Mm -hmm. we, we're, we're used to this, right. you know, you're on the left, you're gonna get the pass, you're in on the, you know, it's basically a mafia game where if you're all in on it together, you let your people off and you always go for everybody else. So is the country just insane right now? I mean, basically, when this happened, I now I assume that just lit a fire under MAGA. It, it did. And is MSNBC and CNN saying, wait, are the walls closing in yeah. on the guy? The walls are closing course, in? We, These we, freaking we, walls, we, man. We, we got you now. We got you now. That's exactly what <laughs> they're that saying. What, yeah. That's exactly what you're saying. And, if you and talk, is this story still burning hot right yes, now? Because you yes. said, what did you say, on the 8th or so? 8th or 9th, something like that? It happened about... About a month ago, not quite a month yeah, ago. Yeah, okay. And right now, the issue is whether there'll be some independent uh, uh, magistrate or marshal, or I forget the term, to look at all of this to determine whether or not it, it should it was fair. If you talk, God, if you cut they, on, they want to make him Jesus. If you That's cut on CNN, you idiots. cut on CNN, and cut on MSNBC, all, all their lawyers say Donald Trump should not have taken these documents. Uh, it's outrageous for him to take the documents. This is a guy who does not play by the rules, and uh, he got what, he's de what he deserves. Do, do we know what any of the documents are, though? Like, do we actually know, okay, there is a document in there that had some secret well, stuff yeah, and the yeah, KFC there, there, recipe? There was, a, there was a list of all the stuff that was taken out, uh, although the affidavit underlying the warrant was heavily redacted. I mean, you look at the sheet, there's a bunch of black stuff all <laughs> over there, so you're not sure exactly what it is they, right. they were looking for or what it is they have. Um, but um, it does not appear that... Um, we still know. We right. still, still like we don't know. Do, does this feel like all the others to you? Like the impeachments? Like it's just like a show or the January sixth thing? Like the show must go on, but obviously nothing comes of it. Now, like now this as is, you're telling me this, this like is, that's my this, gut feeling is, this, oh, here we is, go this again. Is where, but, this is where I feel feel the pressure on me. Yeah, I want to make sure I give you enough information so that you can respond to it uh, in a rational uh, Dave Rubin esque way. Um, I think I've given you all the information. So. The answer to your question is, in my opinion, yes, it's the same stuff. It feels they, like the they, same They thing. despise yeah. this man. Uh, they're not giving him any leeway. You know, Trump does not dot all the I's across all the T's. Uh, he often says things that turn out to be exaggerations. I mean, that's how he is. Yeah. I, I, I've always said this, and, it, and this is not original to me. We, meaning people that support Trump, take him seriously but not literally. The people who hate his guts take him literally but not seriously. Mm -hmm. And that's, to me, what's going on here. So... I mean, people think there's a legitimate feeling that he could be indicted, which what, would, would send him to jail. Like, I've always we... said uh, that I bet my house, and since I live in L.A. and and given <laughs> and given the homeless encampment not too far <laughs> from you it, fool ma in ma LA? Ma maybe you don't want it. But I always <laughs> always said I bet my house he will not be indicted. I still don't think he will be, but I never would have thought that they would have executed a raid on Mar-a-Lago either. So I don't know anymore. I, I still, if I were a betting person, I would say he's not going to be indicted. So you ask me if the country's on fire. That's what the country's waiting for. If the man gets indicted, uh, uh, Senator um, uh, from North Carolina, Lindsey Graham, mm -hmm. said that he believes there will be riots in the street. He said that, and a lot of people reacted to what he said. Um, I believe that that's the next shoe to drop. Well, if, that, if, that happen, if, that happens, if that happens, if that happens, there will be an explosion in the country, in my opinion. So that's what people are waiting for right now. Wow, you know, it's funny. So right before I went off the grid, as I say every year, but I really meant it more so this year, just because of the general state of chaos. And we haven't even talked, we haven't mentioned Brandon yet. But like, I wasn't even sure if he was going to be president when I got back. I right. assume he is, if that's the biggest story. Right. Um, but I, I said right before I left, I was like, there is nothing that would surprise me. That there would literally, be, it would be almost impossible for you to sit me down here and say something that would be so off the rails, you know, short of the alien invasion or the zombie apocalypse, which right. wouldn't have been that crazy to me either. Um, but this this feels a little bit more like just like the standard, this is what these guys do. Mm -hmm. So I think my gut reaction is just sort of non-hysterical because 
this is what they do. We went through 18 impeachments. We went through the January 6th farce. Right. Like, I'm not saying, I have no idea, obviously, I'm just hearing this now, but it's mm -hmm. like, maybe he took some stuff he shouldn't have. And yeah, is he a little sloppy and the cross right. the T's and dot the I stuff? Right. Sure, but like, does he have secret documents at the country club in West Palm? Like, and this is what's gonna get him. And is he trying to undermine, of, and is he trying to undermine the country? Um, is, is he taking documents out because he's selling them to the Russians? I mean, what, what exactly are you suggesting here? And that, he's fighting this like oh, Trump yeah. style, like oh, yeah. full on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fight, fight, fight. Right, and his lawyers have been on television, and one of them said that we were cooperating, and then all of a sudden the cooperation stopped, and they went in, they didn't have to do this, uh, uh, we could have worked it out, why didn't we? Why didn't they give us a chance to work it out? That's Interesting, kind of I, I wonder if they thought that he was gonna announce a run over the summer, and that's why they did it, because right. I kind of felt, I didn't want to say it right before I went off, but I kind of felt he was gonna announce in the summer so that he would be first in, keep the media always about him, right. and then also take credit when hopefully, unless you're gonna tell me something else crazy here, we get a massive red wave in November, that he would be basically be like, see, I announced, Republicans crushed, well, 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 speak, I'm speak, orange, we're red, let's roll. Speaking of which, and there's a lot of stuff yeah. I wanna get to, but speaking yeah. of which, wow, all right. so, so after far. this raid, uh, and, and Trump, by the way, calls it a raid, and the FBI does not call it a raid, they call it a search. So, it's like, Insurrection, uh, they, insurrection, riot. Yeah. <laughs> the polls show that the percentage of Republicans who want Trump to run in 2024 went up. That doesn't surprise me. And the that polls show that me. the percentage of people after these 9-11 televised hearings uh, who believe Trump is responsible for the riot went down. So if the goal was to weaken Donald Trump as a candidate in 2024 regarding the televised hearings, or to weaken him as a candidate regarding this raid on Mar-a-Lago, it backfired. You know, it's so obvious when, when you step away from the news a little bit and then I hear a story like this, like it's just so obvious to me how badly CNN and MSNBC and Washington Post and New York Times, they need him. They need him way more than he needs them at this point. Like I'm sure their ratings are pretty good right now, right? Like people are paying attention, you know, pretty good relative to what they are, right? So it's like they're not Fox ratings, but like people are paying, they need, Hysteria. They just need they, that endless source of hysteria. They need Trump. They anything need, better they, than they, they that. Need, they need Trump. And I've, I've always maintained one of the reasons the media so dislikes him is because when he ran in 2016, they thought of him as a joke. They put him on MSNBC, they put him on CNN, and the ratings went up. Yep. But they did not think of him as a serious candidate. So no harm, no foul. The numbers go up. We can have some fun with him, laugh, laugh behind his back. And then little by little, of course, he began picking off his rivals, and they realized they created a monster, yep. and they were determined now to undo that. You mentioned ratings. Uh, where, while you were gone, Brian Stelter got fired, the media guy on CNN. Yes, are you kidding? Jeff Tubin Wait. got fired <laughs> when they brought him back. <laughs> now, Tubin, Wait, Tubin, they brought him back? They, you know they brought him back after he they brought him yeah he after, after he took out his Tubin. All right, all right, nobody's perfect. Uh, you know. New Yorker, by the way, fired Tubin on the spot and uh, CNN suspended him, brought him back. But he came back before you left. Wait, 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 put Tubin aside. Stelter is out. Stelter's out, gone, gone. Wow, And they did it. Yeah, they did it. Uh, they th did th it. Th there's a new CEO who says yeah. he wants, wants CNN to get back to being fair uh, fair and balanced, as if they ever were. Right, uh, and, a little late for that. And he's apparently cleaning house. He had a little meeting, the C new CNN, I think his name is Mike. I'm shocked. I mean, had, was, had, a, had a meeting and said, nobody is secure. We want to get back to not being perceived as a left-wing network. I'm paraphrasing. Yeah. And then within days of that meeting, Brian Stelter was gone. And they gave him a week or so to say goodbye, yeah. which was a mistake, because yeah. he, teed off, he teed off on the, on the new owners. They are dis ah. their Discovery right. and the CEO and, and teed off on, on that guy. Uh, and then Jeff Tubin also got released. Wait. Stelter, first off, what's interesting to me about that is like he, he sort of became the worst of the worst. You know, he's supposed to critique the media. Right. And you know, you're, you're probably, are you friends with Howard Kurtz at all? Or you must have done a show. I, I did over a show years, when I ran for governor. Because he had the original right. reliable sources right. before Stelter. And I remember watching that when I was a kid. I was always interested in media and politics mm -hmm. and that stuff. And it was a good show on Sunday mornings. Right. And then he just, Stelter just became the worst of the worst, like giving everyone what you think they want all the time. Recall, Man, the internet must have loved this. The when, memes must have been when, incredible. Remember when the Hunter Biden laptop story broke? Of course. Of Stelter course. was one of those out front yep, talking we're not Russian, cover it. Russian disinformation, uh, all the hallmarks of Russian disinformation, and uh, went off on how fraudulent the story was. And of course, it wasn't fraudulent. And he denied that he did that when the tape was all over the place. No, no he is the embodiment of why a lot of us dislike CNN. But 
as far as I'm concerned, Don Lamon is every bit as bad, if not yeah. worse, because he purports to be a news guy. At least Stelter never pretended to be a news guy. He was a, he was a commentator, a critic. And why Don Lamont still has a job is beyond me. Remember during right. Jossie Smollett? Turns out Don Lamont uh, <laughs> called him off the record and told him that the yeah. Chicago police did not believe his story uh, and gave him a heads up. A news guy is not supposed to do that. And later on, that, that, that came out and nothing happened to Don Lamont. So... That, well, none of that surprises me. And my guess is that Lamont's head is on the chopping block, too, and probably a few others. We'll see. But, 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 but since, since, is, since this guy, since the new CEO has been in office, but, but been running the place, by the way, about six weeks now, their numbers have gotten worse. Really? Yeah. Because so, it's, it's so irreparably damaged. The, the nuclear meltdown, it's begun already, the core meltdown. There's, there's nothing they can do. The New York Times, there's nothing they can do. You step away from it for a little bit, it's so obvious. These things are in their death throes. And what's interesting about a guy like Stelter is like Stelter has all the opportunity in the world right now, so, right? So you're, you're more surprised at Stelter being fired than the Mar-a-Lago raid. <laughs> well, the Mar-a-Lago raid just feels like, yeah, the next yeah. Trump adventure. Right. It's like the adventures of Donald Trump. You know, it's like Harry Potter and the blah, blah, blah. It's just Donald Trump and the raid on Mar-a-Lago. Okay, here we go. Stelter, though, what's interesting is... I'm guaranteeing you, this guy is not getting another decent job. Like, he's oh, done. Please. Oh, please. Like, and, and he has nobody that's going to support him. Like, here we are in the local studio because a certain amount of people support me, a certain amount of people support you. There's such a, a like, an incredible, uh, fertile ground right now for people that are he, interesting to, to he, get out he, there and get support. He'll get another job. No, he'll get some crappy throwaway job, but I'm saying no, he'll, no he'll, real people he'll, will support he'll, him. It he'll was go the back, chair. He'll go back to Washington Post or he'll go back to oh. MSNB Hee which brings up another thing that yes. happened. Yes. Um, I made a joke and I said something about. Uh, What's the over-under on whether MSNB Hee Haw hires Stelter first or Liz Cheney? Oh, my God. Liz Cheney lost her primary. Oh, she did. Good. Well, that, that's, yeah, good, great. Uh, let me ask uh, you. What, was by, it a by, bloodbath? By, by how many points do you think she lost it? So I like Harriet Hageman, and I had her on the show, and I was very impressed with her. How many points? I yeah. mean, oh, my God, was it, was it more than 10? 37. She lost by 37 points. That is the so biggest great. loss of any incumbent uh, running for re-election uh, in a primary this century. That is, and the largest one I've ever heard of, 37 points. But but I thought she was the moral face of the Republicans. And, I and Cheney that gave she was gave the a, most... a, a concession speech in which she said she's going to spend the rest of her energy making sure that Donald Trump never approaches the White House again. I, I guess, except as a tourist, maybe. Wait, wait, wait. So I'm she guessing... Said, she said that. So I'm guessing now MSNBC and CNN, everyone saying that she'll be, she's going to run for president, probably. Like, well, that's got to be the next well, she move. Oh, she, she, she was sort of too good for she that she simple She job. certainly implied it. Uh, and then she was interviewed, and, and, and she said something to the effect of, they don't want to see me on the debate stage with Donald Trump. Well, as far as I know, in order for you to get on the debate stage, you have to agree to support the eventual nominee. Mm -hmm. And the whole point about her running is to make sure that Donald Trump does not become the nominee. So I'm not quite sure how she's going to navigate that. But there is speculation she may run for president, yes. Good God. Well, that's good. That's good because she's, she's nothing. You know, it's like what I always call these people, they're pet Republicans. The sort of Mitt Romney's or Liz Cheney's, these people who go on MSNBC, they say exactly what you want. They never conserve anything. They never accomplish anything, but they get pet on the head. You know, they give them a cookie after right. the appearance and then they get to come back in a week or two. And then the Washington Post says nice yeah. things about them, as opposed to L.A. Times calling you the black face of white supremacy. Well, and, and, you know, Dave, what gets me about people like Romney and Cheney, Romney, as you know, ran in 2012. Harry Reid goes on the floor of the Senate and flat out lies and says, the word in the street is, the man has not paid taxes in 10 years because at the time, uh, Romney, yeah. Romney didn't want to turn over his tax returns. And then a few years later, Harry Reid's interviewed, and he admits he knowingly lied. And when uh, Dana Bash of CNN asked him about that, well, how do you feel about that? He goes, well, he didn't win, did he? Yeah. So you, and, and yeah. at, the at the time, the polls showed that Romney was probably going to beat uh, uh, Obama, who wanted to be reelected. And so what Harry Reid did was basically torpedo uh, Romney's chances of becoming president. Fast forward, he now hates Donald Trump's guts. And Cheney, uh, her dad, Dick Cheney, as you know, was vice president under W. And just a few years ago, he was called a war criminal by the very people that mm -hmm. are now embracing Liz Cheney. So I don't, I don't quite understand it. No, but because she wants in on the machine. You know, like it's it's pretty sexy if you can get in on it. If you can sell your soul to that degree, the same people, you will sell your soul to the same people who were trying to destroy your father and your family name and everything else. Mm -hmm. But 
I guess the constituents are a little wiser than Liz. Well, that is something. Wait, can we pause for one second? Because I just realized, uh, I mentioned to you right before we started, but it's worth mentioning again, that a year ago right now, September 1st, you were running for governor right. of California. Just to talk about how a year changes so quickly and how everything flips so quickly. You were running for governor. We were campaigning together. I think on September 2nd or 3rd, I, I was at an event with you right. uh, somewhere uh, about, ha about half hour, 45 minutes, maybe Modesto or something. Um, and then, obviously, the recall did not go the way we wanted. And then two or three days later, I was done. I was right. done with Cali. You're still in Cali. We're now in Florida. Like, things, man, what a year. You know, what a, year, a whole man. bunch of people told me, had I won, they would have stayed. Yep. I, a lot of people told me, had I won, they would have come back. And so I, I would have stayed, obviously. So, so the exodus has accelerated yeah. after that. What a year. Back to Cheney for a second. Yes, sorry. Uh, you, said, you, said, you said she wants to, wants to join the machine. It turns out her net worth since she's been in Congress has increased substantially. Now, she has a husband who's a Pelosi partner. style? She has a husband who's a partner at one of the major law firms, Latham and Watkins. But her own personal net worth has also increased three or fourfold. And nobody can quite, quite figure out why. She owns a lot of stock. Uh, as you know, many people who are in, in the House have been able to take advantage of inside information. I'm not saying she did it. All yep. I'm saying is that there was a big story about how her net worth has increased pretty substantially. Man. All right. So, so far, this is so far this is pretty interesting. So we got the Trump raid. I have to obviously right. ingest that a little bit more. Right. Stelter getting the boot right. is spectacular. Right? I don't wait. The thing is, I don't wish ill on people, but he's not someone that should be respected or listened to. So go do something else. Go be a potato farmer. You got to get going. You just can't stay here. So him out tubing, who cares? It's like, all right, whatever. I'm sure he can get a job on, uh, what's that site? Uh, OnlyFans or something. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't do well, but and, and then this Liz thing. So okay, we're getting rid of some people. Some some people seem to be moving out of the way. The brush is clearing. What else you got for well, me speak, with that smile on your face? Speak, speaking of Brandon, uh, oh yeah, Brandon has he's tested, still doing it, tested huh? positive for COVID again. Right uh, now, he's yeah. Well, and then and then after a few days, he went into isolation, and they said he was negative, and tested positive again. Good God. You know, remember what happened right before I left the grid just a few days before was when he accidentally said he had cancer and everyone was like, no, 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 that's just because he has dementia. <laughs> yeah. Like that's the level that we're right. dealing with mm -hmm. with Brandon. I didn't hear his name once. Actually, the only time I heard his name the entire month is we've been doing some construction at the house and my, my contractor is annoyed. He calls him Brandon because the mm -hmm. supply chain is so screwed up that, you know, you can't get a screw because of Brandon, basically. Right. You can get screwed. Because of Brandon. <laughs> so wait, so he has COVID for now, the 18th time. Yeah, but and what about the fumbles and the mumbles and everything? Like, still, is, is it just still, still, still doing those? <laughs> and, uh, and, he, and he did a big signing. He, I think there were two major things he's done that you should be aware of. Yeah. The first is the uh, sort of skinny version of Build Back Better has now been passed. Mansion and Cinema both conceded. Okay. And a bunch of money, uh, hundreds of billions of dollars of money. Uh, is being spent, 85% uh, of it which is for climate change, but it's called the Inflation Reduction Act. Ah, uh, yes, and, because spending a whole bunch of money really helps. Right. It. God, you got to admire it. you right. got to admire the evil. Right, and even Bernie Sanders said that this bill is not going to reduce inflation. Even Bernie <laughs> Sanders said it. So, bunch of money, hundreds of billions of dollars more. The second thing he did is that he is, through executive order, apparently, um, there's still some details left, but going to forgive up to $10,000 in student debt for people making under $125,000 or for a household making two hundred and fifty, it could be as high as $20,000. And the lion's share of it... I mean, it's just nonsense. The lion's share of it is going to go to people whose incomes are at or above the national average or will soon be at or above the national average because they went to college. Right. And so people that didn't go to college or people who went and paid their own loans off are not happy. Even some right. Democrats are not happy. Right. Well, you're punishing people for doing the right thing. I remember very clearly when we paid off David's final uh, college loans. It was a great moment. We worked really hard. He had loans for years. And finally, we were making some money a couple of years ago. We paid it off. It was great. It's like, why pay it off? And also, what do you say for 100, 150 grand? Uh, uh, $125,000 100. singles. But if you're a household, you can forgive up to 20 grand. Think how these, these are people that had Pell Grants. And so the idea is that these are people who are on the lower end of the economic spectrum. But the people that went to college, and the reason you go to college is to make more money, uh, are 
either at or will likely be at above the national average in salary, and so people that are below that are not happy. Larry, I'm not a constitutional scholar, and I've been a little off the, uh, the beaten path lately, but I'm pretty sure the founders didn't think that the president would be able to sign something, which he doesn't even sign, it's right. like an auto pen or something, right. so that someone's debt, who voluntarily got into debt to do something, whether it turned out to be good or not, and often at 125 grand, that means you could get out of college, be making 100 grand a year, which is pretty decent. You went to Duke where you spent all this money to get in. You're subsidizing actually upper middle class people in many cases, right? You're not just subsidizing the, the, the kid from the inner city who goes to community college, God, these and, and, regarding, are such and regarding the legality I of this, how stupid in, everybody in is. July of last year, Nancy Pelosi said during one of her press conferences that the president lacked the legal authority to do this. Right, after, of course, after, of course. After, after Biden did it, she extolled the virtues of, of the bill. Uh, the general counsel of the uh, Secretary of Education under Barack Obama also said recently that he did not believe the president had the legal authority to do this. So. Uh, it's already being being sued, being challenged in court, and it's going to work its way up to the Supreme Court probably. Do they ever even think of the secondary effects of this stuff? It's like you can't just erase it. It still exists. You could say, oh, you don't have to pay it, but the debt still exists. Do they care? Somebody, right? Somebody's got to carry the one. O remember when Obama used to say he didn't have the legal authority to le legalize a bunch of illegal aliens and did and didn't dock it anyway? Uh, so well, remember AOC, she said, you don't have to be factually correct, you have to be morally right. <laughs> morally right. God, moron. So, all right, so this is hung up in court, though. Yeah. And I, I'm going to guess, actually, that, correct me if I'm wrong, I got one here for you. I'm going to guess that the loony progressive side is saying he didn't do enough, right? Like well, they're probably well, actually, you're right. The NAACP is unhappy yeah. because they feel a disproportion of this will go to white people. To white because, people. In fact, I've called it reparation for white, yeah. rich, 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 for rich white people. Uh, Lawrence Tribe is a law professor from Harvard. Yeah. He tweeted, this is great news for my students now who went to school, who I taught, are now going to be relieved of $10,000. So people that went to Harvard Law. Uh, yeah, <laughs> insane. Are going to be relieved of ten grand of debt, says Lawrence Tribe. God, that the they just want the machine yeah. to continue. So much of it, when you step away, is just about the show must go on. The stupid show must go on. They must get more money with the bills that they sign. And so our Republicans, let me just back up to the to the first building mm -hmm. you were talking about. Mm -hmm. The scaled back bill back better. Our Republicans all did any Republic? Oh no. So obviously some Republicans voted for it, right? Some. Not not in the Senate. Not in the Senate. No. So nobody. So but but Mansion and Cinema came over. Yeah. That was enough. Yeah. And that's where we're at on that's, that. That's thing. where we're at. Yeah. The Inflation Reduction mm -hmm. Act. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's what's called the Inflation Reduction Act. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, uh, Joe Biden's poll numbers appear to be doing a little better because really? gas prices have gone down a little bit. And in July, uh, there was zero percent inflation that one month. And Biden did. Oh, that's it. interesting. And Biden did a big press, con press conference. Said inflation is now at zero. It's not at zero. <laughs> it was zero in July. <laughs> year to year, eight point five. Wait, but was that a flub or just a lie? Uh, like, was, was that well, just one well, of his, it, like, he doesn't know what he's it, saying? If, if, or you, was say, he if you say inflation did not go up in July, it's correct. Yeah, right, right. But inflation year to year went up 8.5. Yeah. And, and year to year for gas prices, up almost 50%. So people are still hurting. Yeah. And it's still the number one issue. It's interesting because here in Florida, I thought maybe that I would be able to gauge what's going on in the country just by the amount of people that are out and about or just, you know, when you go into stores. But everything's so flourishing here that everywhere I go, things are packed. There's so many cars on the roads, the stores are all packed, the restaurants are all packed, but I know Florida is not the, the sort of perfect bellwether for the rest of the country. Um, going through some of these, um, yeah. a Republican member of the House name is Jackie Walorski, uh, Indiana, was killed in a car crash. Um, and the, she's 58 years old. And the controversy is the way the New York Times did her sort of obituary. Ugh, One of the first lines was, she uh, supported what happened uh, when Donald Trump has been denying the election. I basically called her an election denier, as opposed In to first line, go, yeah. going over her yeah. career, her life, and what happened. Uh, 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 Representative Walorski, comma, who uh, was one of those who doesn't believe the 2020 election was on the up and up, comma, blah, blah, blah. God, it's so gross. I mean, that when you when you make politics about everything, then it, it's just so gross that they do. It's not a newspaper. That's what people need to understand. These things are not. New York Times, by no estimation 
of what we old school folks would think of as a newspaper, all the news that's fit to print. Right. It's not that. CNN is not a news organization, even if this guy fired Stelter. Like that type of thing, that, that's just so gross. That, that doesn't surprise me. Um, but You mentioned New York Times. Yeah. New York Times has not endorsed a Republican for president since 1956. Is that right? Since I was four years old. Who was it? Do you know who it was? Uh, 56, that would have been uh, Eisenhower. Jeez. That's it. Yeah. That's it. So, uh, you know, Mondale over Reagan, really? Yeah. Dukakis over George Herbert Walker Bush, really? Were you on the, uh, when they did the Sunday cover about the people on YouTube that are leading people to the alt-right, and it was me and Jordan Peterson and Milton Friedman and Shapiro, I, were you? I'm not sure you, I was. I don't think did so. Did you not make that one? I think I would have known. Damn. I did make the cover of Newsweek recently. Yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah. Uh, uh, it, was, look, look. it was about, it was about uh, then came out around the time of my election, and uh, I'm sitting in a chair, kind of like this, like the Godfather, and there are four or five other Republicans standing around me, including Winston Sears, Candace Owens, um, oh, the whole Vernon, crew. Vernon Jones, and, and, and one or two other people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't remember that. Uh, back to this, uh, the congresswoman that, yeah. that, that died and how they are phrasing her as an election denier. Here's what bothers me, Dave, I want to get your reaction to it. For four years, when Trump was president, Hillary referred to him as having been, uh, as, as illegitimate, her word, not mm -hmm. mine, yeah. and called the election stolen. Um, there was a thousand page report about the 2016 election, the Senate did, and th there were two major conclusions. Now, conclusion number one is, it's gonna keep moving. Conclusion, conclusion number one is that um, uh, the Russians tried to alter vote tallies, but they did not succeed in changing a single vote tally. Mm -hmm. YouGov poll came out in 2018, 66% of Democrats believe the Russians, quote, altered vote tallies, yep. close quote, to elect Donald Trump. Yep. Even though there's zero evidence they altered a single vote. Uh, Jay Johnson, his uh, DHS secretary, testified under oath, Obama's secretary under oath, that not a single vote tally was changed. Yet two thirds of Democrats believe that they were. The second major finding is, uh, Jay Johnson said, we have no idea whether the Russian interference altered the outcome of the election. We'd have to be mind readers to know that. We know they tried. We don't know whether they had an effect on public opinion. We don't know whether it had an effect on the outcome. 78% of Democrats, according to, to Gallup, 2018, believe that the Russian interference, quote, altered the outcome of the election, close quote. My point is, a greater percentage of Republican, of Democrats believe 2016 was stolen than we believe that about 2020. Yet, Hillary's not called an election denier. Um, uh, uh, Stacey Abrams, who cl still claims that she yep. lost her election because of, of fraud, uh, is not called an election denier. Uh, Al Gore, who still claims that the Supreme Court put uh, George W. Bush yep. there, is not called an election denier. Hillary's not called an election denier. Her platforms have not been shut down, even though their analysis of 2016 has caused so many Democrats to falsely believe the Russians changed vote tallies. You know, it's interesting because Basically, you're, you're getting back to that double standard thing mm -hmm. again. And in some ways, you know, for, the, for this whole month, it was a lot of baby stuff for me. But when I would sort of think about how I want to do the show going forward and how I want to have a new take on things, and it had something to do with this. Because this, the double standard thing, it is never going to stop. People need to understand that. We can expose it. A lot of us do a hell of a job exposing it. Right. You've been doing it for years on the radio. Obviously, I've been doing it. Now there's Shapiro and Rogan and all these people exposing the nonsense, right? Mm -hmm. But the nonsense is never going to stop. It, it, the machine sort of needs the nonsense. It needs the lie. It needs, it, it, it launders lies through the system. And then you get a certain amount of people like a Liz Cheney or say a Jennifer Rubin who is not my sister or a Bill Crystal. <laughs> these people who used to kind of make sense. Right. But then they realize the system never loses. The house never loses. So then they want to get in on it. So it's a much, uh, I guess it's a little more, um, a little more scary to be on our side of it, to know that for whatever reason, this force just exists. And, and it's going and going and going, and you're always fighting it. But I've been really trying to think in the last month, like how do I want to go ahead and, and do the show? And it's like, you have to call attention to it, and you have to be, hey, you know, they would do it this way if it was our guy, and this is how they do it for their guy. But also not get completely obsessed by that, because because you can't win. Well, well, you can't what win they that, what they right? do, what they say is uh, you're engaging in what about is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear yeah, that all yeah. the time. I said, I'm, no, I'm calling out the hypocrisy. I'm calling out the selective outrage. I'm calling out the double standard. For example, Benny Thompson is a chair of the January 6th committee. He's the one chairing the, these televised hearings. January. Wait, is uh, that is that shit still going on? Oh yeah, it's still happening. Still going on. They, yeah, they, they, I think didn't they, they they put a pin in it and then they said we'll have well, season they, two they, after they, they the... stopped it, but they are implying there's one more to come. 
Um, anyway, because it, Trump didn't Trump grab the driver and then yes, drive the spo- car supposedly, and, and, then, and then one of the Secret Service agents said it never, <laughs> never happened. But Benny Thompson is the chair of the January Sixth Committee. Yeah. And in January of two thousand five, after uh, George W. Bush won re-election, uh, they challenged the certification of the electors in Ohio, and he joined thirty Democrats to argue that the uh, election in Ohio was fraudulent, should be set aside, uh, arguing, among other things, that the Diebold voting machines were rigged Mm -hmm. because Diebold, uh, I think the CEO was Republican, were rigged, even though there's no evidence of that. So he was engaging in, wait for it, election denying. Here he is chairing the the, the hearings. It's just what they do. You know, it's like, if you think about the way that they've treated the squad, right? These are all heroes Mm -hmm. and they're such empowered, wonderful women. And then what happens? That woman, Myra Flores, wins that seat in Texas, right? And what is she in the New York Times? What's the article called? The Rise of the Far-Right Latina. Right. Sound a little familiar to something they used to do to you? Yeah. So it's like, it's just, it just is what it is. And we just have to, we just have to keep building new things and and separate from these people. I I really believe that. This is not on your, this this is not on the list of of, of topics I was given, but you just reminded me of something. Yeah. One quarter of the squad is Ilan Omar. Yeah. Who of course wants to defund the police. She called the cops because somebody apparently was at her, was on her property, hiding in her trash can. And she oh, called the police. So really? she kind of wanted them to come to her rescue when she needed them, but she wants to simultaneously defund the police. The same people that she has demonized yeah. endlessly have basically yeah. destroyed. We don't, we don't want to use the H word, hypocrisy. Yeah. Remember that when she uh, she was calling for defunding the police, they're ruined. They're literally burning down right. Minneapolis, and then she gets she does that press conference from a gym somewhere at a school, and she's like, "The police aren't doing their job," and it's like, "Man, you people!" Your governor uh, has been hitting, oh, hitting, right. hitting the campaign trail, yeah, and he has been supporting people that the critics have been calling election deniers, people like Carrie Lake uh, in Arizona, who I also supported. By the way, she won Oh, her- so DeSantis is supporting Carrie Lake. Right. All right, great. And she won her primary. Yeah, oh, and, good. And is in a, uh, a tough fight for, for, uh, for governor. Yeah. But DeSantis is being criticized for supporting, quote, election deniers in various other races around the country. So if you support somebody who is skeptical about the results of 2020, you, in fact, have now been infected by the same disease, and you're an election deni- denier as well. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that Ron DeSantis doesn't care about that and he's going to keep doing what he's doing. I assume things are going well here in Florida. Is he still basically the president? I he, mean, he yeah. basically is the functioning president. He's, or, he's still the, a rock star. He's yes. sort of the leader of the yeah. country at the moment. Yeah, He's still a rock star. Yeah. Um, the mass mandates have now uh, uh, come back uh, in, in certain areas, certain areas. So I have not heard a thing Phil, about COVID. Phil, I, I, COVID has nothing to do with my life right now, like literally nothing to do with my life at any level whatsoever. Fauci apparently is going to retire at the end of the year. Okay. With the I highest think... with the highest pension any government employee has ever had, close to half a million dollars a year until he dies. And Jesus. he's never Well, gonna... he's the highest paid federal employee, right? Yeah. He makes about 420 grand a year. Yeah, and he's never going to die, so. Yeah. <laughs> right, they've been injecting him with right. with all sorts of stuff. He also got Wait, 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 wait. wait. He Did also you say got... the mass mandates are coming back? Well, Where? in certain or... areas, Philadelphia. Speaking of which, I got to tell you about this little thing that's going on in Philadelphia. Get yeah. Not, get not on the sheet, but I want to get yeah. your reaction to it. Yeah. Um, there's a, an amusement park called Sesame Place. Have you ever heard oh, of yeah. it? Oh, yeah. I used to go there when I was a kid. I've been there many times, climb on those ropes. I had and... never heard of it. Yeah. I'm in L.A. We have uh, you Disneyland. Got, yeah. Uh, you got Universal Studios. Yeah. Uh, some, You're a Burbank guy. Yeah. And uh, uh, not Berry Farm and yeah. a few other things, but I had never heard of Sesame Place. Yeah. yeah. And it's, up in, it's in Pennsylvania, I think. Right outside Philadelphia. Yeah. Okay. So there are Muppets characters that, that, that run around. Oh, God. And the character named Rosita, you know who that is? That's the green one with, with shaggy stuff, Ro- Rosita. Let me guess. She's trans. No. Um, there's video of Rosita going down a little street where the kids are, are going like this, cheering as she's going down the street. And she's high-fiving white kids. But the little black girls that want him to high five, and he, and and Rosita ignores them. I mean, it's pretty blatant. If you look, okay, if you so look it at the video, it actually strikes you as yeah, blatant. coming okay, coming coming okay. down the road like like like, okay. like, like a parade. Right. And on the sideline, you have all these people, and they, and, these, and and the characters high, <laughs> highlighting them. By the way, you don't know who's underneath the costume. It could be a male, could be female, could be black, could be anybody. You don't know. Right. But these little black kids were ignored. Okay. And the parents of the black kids put it on YouTube. And then other parents who'd gone to Sesame Place put 
other instances on YouTube where their kids were were ignored by the and, same character. By the same character. Okay, so this sounds like so something, seems something like, interesting here. May, maybe we, yeah, don't, we, don't, okay. we don't we don't know. Let me guess. It was a black woman in there. No, we don't oh. know. We don't know who's under. We the, still we, don't. We, know. we still don't know. It's still a mystery right now. Wait, why don't they tell us who Rosita is? Twenty five. Not even matter. Twenty five million dollar class action lawsuit oh. fi filed by a family from Baltimore, whose kids were ignored. Oscar um, already lives in the trash. Now they're going to sue him for twenty. Sesame million Place puts out, a, puts out a statement apologizing profusely, offering the family that whose feelings were hurt the lifetime passes. Wow. Uh, and but Jesse Jackson sends a letter, <laughs> demanding that they all undergo sensitivity training, that there be at least one black member of the board of directors, and that they and they do and they do more business with black vendors. Jackson says nothing, however, about. The fact that in Baltimore, the city where these kids were from, 13 public high schools, 0% of the kids are math proficient. Another half dozen where only 1% is. Jackson did not write a letter about Philadelphia on track for more homicides in their history, and almost all these homicides are black people. So that didn't cause Jackson to write a letter, but he wrote a letter on behalf of the families that allegedly were dissed by Rosita. So you're saying there's a little more publicity in going after Elmo than, say, dealing with uh, Crime inner and, city. Crime and bad schools, yeah, yeah. Well, obviously we must know the racial makeup of Rosita to have a better understanding of the story, because if it's a white person, it's racist. If it's a black person, maybe they're confused or colored. Or, se I mean, or self-loathing. Self-loathing. Or, self or, yeah. or black face of white supremacy. Are people saying it to you? Are you Rosita? <laughs> now, That's messed um, up, man. Uh, as you know, uh, uh, George Floyd uh, died uh, because of what Derek Chauvin did, big trial, Derek Chauvin was found not guilty. A few days ago, there were three Arkansas police officers. Wait, sorry, Derek Chauvin was found guilty, right? Yeah, they said, was they found guilty. Not guilty. Okay, okay. Did I say not guilty? I think he said not okay, guilty. Okay, guilty. Found, found guilty. Yeah. Uh, although, I will tell you that um, it, it spawned four months, as you know, of riots yeah. in, in, in the streets. Peaceful riots. Tw they were peace, people, love and tolerance tw riots. 25 people were, were killed or yeah. more. About 2,000 officers were injured. And it is estimated that about $2 billion of damage w w was done. Zero evidence that whatever you think about Derek Chauvin, and I believe that the, the verdict was just, that he did it because of Eric, uh, of George Floyd's race. The, the black prosecutor leaned over backwards to make sure in his opening statement that he said police officers in general were not on trial. Minneapolis police officers were, were not on trial. This individual was on trial, and he never argued that, that Chauvin was motivated by George Floyd's race. Yet there were four months worth of, of protests in the streets all presumably because they believe that George Floyd was a victim of police brutality because of his race. Three or four days ago, there were three Arkansas cops, I forget the name of the town, beating the crap out of a white suspect. The cops are all white. And um, the suspect allegedly, we don't know because they didn't show the video ahead of time, but the suspect allegedly attacked an officer, body slammed an officer. And there were three officers on top of this guy just beating him, beating, kicking him, beating him, beating him, kicking him. One day story. Yeah. I'm surprised it even made a day story. One day story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There were about 10 million views on YouTube, but on CNN and MSNB, hee -haw, one day story. Man, that's the double standard thing mm -hmm. again. And it's just like, it's something we just have to like, you just basically have to swallow it, understand it, know that it is. And that, right, like where, wouldn't Black Lives Matter care about police brutality regardless of skin color? If, if your main issue for two years, we were told the whole country, or for more than two years, but right. you know, they're driving force of that movement when they weren't burning down the local mom and pop nail salon and, and shoe repair place, right. was that this is a systemically racist country and police are evil. So if police were beating the crap out of a white guy, wouldn't you still care about that if you really cared about? Larry, I'm starting to think these people are full of shit. What do you think, man? One day is it just, am I just, one, been gone. One, one day story. I'm seeing it clear, as, as man. my mom used to say, he's just a dead fly. Now, the guy's alive. He wasn't killed. Mm -hmm. uh, but he was beating the snop out. It, it, it was a Rodney King-esque kind of beating, although it was just three cops and not, uh, not how many there were with Rodney King. Right. Uh, show business. Yes. You know who Anne Hayes is? Uh, the, the actress. She's not Ellen's wife. You, she was or, Ellen's wife. Or she was Ellen's they, wife. They, they, yeah. they divorced her. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. She's dead. Oh. She was in a car accident. Uh, apparently she was on drugs, and this is in an area of L.A. called Hawthorne. She was driving, and she plowed into another house. Oh, she. Uh, and she was killed. Huh. The, no one in the house was killed, but she was taken out on a stretcher. This, this video, 
and she died uh, a few hours later, apparently, 53, 53 wow. years old, and apparently full of drugs, fentanyl, including oh, fentanyl. Oh, including fentanyl. Man, I mm -hmm. mean, well, I'm sorry to hear that, but the, the fentanyl thing, I don't know if there are any major story. Well, I guess this is a major story about that, but right. that, that is like the big problem in America on the horizon, if people aren't realizing. Olivia Newton-John uh, died. She died. I, so I did have a feeling that that was the one thing that I thought maybe happened because uh, when I was flipping through like Apple movies at night and on Spotify, there was a ton of Olivia Newton-John stuff. And I was like, they only show you that kind of stuff if someone died. So I, mm -hmm. I did, I thought either she died or like, or it was the 50th anniversary of Greece or so something like that. Right, oh, right. That, that's, that's sad. Staying in the show business mold, uh, Alec Baldwin, as you know, Alec well, Baldwin. Who did he shoot now? <laughs> he shot somebody <laughs> shoot else? Now. What, what now? By the way, when I was running for governor, Alec Baldwin tweeted, Larry Elder, uh, is dangerous. I mean, Trump dangerous. So I tweeted back and I said, "How many people have I shot and killed?" Just in round yeah. numbers. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't respond. Wait, can sure I tell, I'll tell you one uh, Alec Baldwin story. I don't think I've ever said this publicly before, but you're, you know that place, Craig's in L.A. Yeah. It's very famous. It's like where you go to to be seen there. Right. This restaurant right. in West Hollywood, which Craig's, is why, which is why the, I never go there. Right. So I've I've only been there once. <laughs> right. I bet you. I, no, no. I've been there twice. I've I knew been there it. twice. I knew it. When I find signed my first deal, my agent took me there, and then I went. I went one other time. Anyway. Mm -hmm. So the second time I'm there, um, this is before Alec Baldwin shot that person or mm -hmm. some of the stuff, but it, this is maybe like six years ago or so. I'm at Craig's and the way the whole restaurant is, because it's to be seen there, all the booths are sort of in a U so that everyone can see everybody because mm -hmm. that's the whole idea. You right. want to see people and the paparazzi are outside. Alec Baldwin came in and he's with his wife. I don't know her name, but the I, maybe they're still married, blonde woman. He was screaming screaming at her and getting in her face in a violent manner like I have never seen before, really? ever publicly. Like it was so designed to be seen and make sure everyone knows they see, because it's all it's all celebrities there. And it's and the, so, every so time he, they, so he every wanted, time they he open the door, the seen, flashes. And he wanted them to report on him yelling at her? I think so. Like wow. wanted just that he, he wanted everyone in that place to look at him and mm -hmm. see him and blah, blah, blah. Did it work? Gross. Was there a story on it? I don't know that there was a story on it, but everyone in the restaurant was looking at him. Everybody, at the oh, it's Alec. Oh, look at the way he's yelling. Like it was embarrassing. Mm -hmm. It was embarrassing. But so, I did see Steve Gutenberg there. That was pretty good. What's he doing now? I don't know, but he was having dinner he, at Craig's. He, he was that, there. That, that was pretty You're good. You're probably the only one who recognized <laughs> him. I'm just saying. <laughs> Police Academy, man, I love you. Um, Wait, so what happened? The reason Alec I mentioned it is that for whatever reason, the FBI did some sort of report uh, uh, investigation on whether or not he pulled the trigger. He, uh, Baldwin, on a couple of occasions, once to, uh, I call him George Clintonopoulos, Stepanopoulos, told Stepanopoulos, I would never pull a trigger on a, on a gun. I would never do that. I would never point a gun. But he did, didn't he? Of course he did. And so the FBI did some sort of analysis and said, actually, you, you, you did, and you pulled the trigger, and, and the gun and the bullet went out, and you're the one responsible for having killed yeah. this um, she a set designer or a uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. cinematographer or something, I forget right. what it was. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the whole thing with that story is, in, look, I don't think he's a murderer in a, in a traditional sense he of murder. He like has been charged with anything. Right, right, right. I don't think it's like that. Mm -hmm. I also, I don't know the exact um, policies related to on set when they hand you a weapon, but I'm pretty sure when you're on set, he you, were, you he assume. Broke, he broke the policy. So I know, so, I guess some, the policy so, is. Somebody, you, somebody didn't follow the policy. Right, so I guess the policy is you have to check yourself, but I would imagine that actors, think about all the movies with all the guns you think you think sly stallone is like flipping through the chamber every single time he's shooting something like you know so there's a lot of blame to go around uh twitter um god please t so twitter more than anything what, what, what do you think that well, i'm going to say about twitter well i'm guessing nothing happened with elon musk unfortunately that mm -hmm. would be my gut feeling yeah. is that that thing just fizzled out i think maybe it was intentional i, I was saying this months ago I, as much as I wanted him to get it, mm -hmm. I thought maybe he was intentionally trying to expose the nonsense, knowing right. that there's so much fakeness there. I will tell you this, uh, having not been on social media for a month, I mean, first of all, I don't miss any of it, absolutely none of it. I miss this, I miss doing a show, I miss like the reaction with my, with my real fans, that sort of thing, and, and I love this, I really do. Twitter is the one, like, I don't know if I wanna get back on there. I, I, I'm starting to think, that I, oh, I've been thinking it for a while, like just let it go, it's evil and it's so highly manipulated. So I don't know what you're about to tell me, please tell me they discovered something about the algorithm well, or did, or did there was a mass banning or well, let, let am me, I even on Twitter? Let, no, let I know that. Let me first respond to some of the stuff you, yeah. just, you just said. Uh, when I ran for governor, I was just a smidge under a million followers yeah. on Twitter. I remember, we, fact, we were always fact, neck fact, and neck. When you and I first met, yeah. you had about 50,000 more than, yeah. more than I, I did, and I thought, if I can stay even with Dave, and then, then of course you just took <laughs> off, so it left me in the dust. But I had a little under a million. Yeah. And as soon as I 
ended the campaign, over the next several weeks, I lost almost 10,000, yep. almost 20,000. Little by little by little, began losing them. Elon Musk announced his intention to buy Twitter. Blows up, I gained about 200,000. I got, got 10,000 yeah. within 24 hours. Yeah. And, uh, and then when it looked like he was backing away, because he claimed that uh, he was sold a bill of goods, that there were way more bots than he understood, all of a sudden I began losing again. Um, so right now where it stands is he's taken them to court, or, or Twitter's taken him to court to force him to go through with his $44 billion <laughs> To buy offer. the fraudulent right. company, yeah. And there's now a whistleblower who's come forward and said that we at Twitter have no idea how many bots there are. Uh, it is not in our best interest to know how many bots there are. They have no mechanism to find out how many bots there are. Wow. And so now it looks as if uh, the argument that Elon Musk made has a lot more strength behind it now. I'm going on the assumption the whistleblower is now being called an alt-right conspiracy theorist and Alex we, we don't, Jones we, we don't, we don't acolyte. Know. Yeah, we, we don't know who the whistleblower is, but... Uh, I, I think Twitter, there is something about what's going on on Twitter that is that is way more obviously evil than the other stuff. The other ones, you know it's evil. Like you post something on Instagram and it's all full of bots and they're trying to get you to click this link mm -hmm. to buy Bitcoin or mm -hmm. like nonsense. Twitter, it went from, there was this feeling like you could really share a message and thing you could see, you could watch things go viral, right. you could see it. Right. Now I just don't see, like I, I haven't been on Twitter in a month, but I like basically never see your tweets anymore. Mm -hmm. Now does that mean that they're shadow banning and, and I you? Tweet, I tweet a lot. But, do, but does that mean they're shadow banning you to everybody or do they actually pick who they want to see who because they know what nodes right. are, are able to then get other people's messages to spread? Mm -hmm. It's like, this is what I kept thinking all month with Twitter because I really, I'm feeling this thing. You know, Jordan got, Jordan Peterson got booted from Twitter right. because he said that Ellen Page was a woman or Elliot Pages, I don't know, whatever the hell he said, doesn't matter. He's, um, not, he's not a trained biologist. So. Yeah, he's not a what, what, what does he he's know? He's a psychologist. <laughs> what does he a know? psychiatrist, right. not a biologist. What does he know? Um, psychologist. But, um, you know, he stayed off Twitter. He could have deleted the tweet and come back. And as far as I know, unless he came back this month, with um, which I think I can say with confidence he hasn't, hasn't uh, there was a feeling, because I got booted when I then defended him. I basically just screenshot what he said. Right. And I decided to come back because I wanted to be in where the fight is. But it really, it's like playing Monopoly. We're all basically playing Monopoly knowing that the guy in charge of the bank is stealing money. Right. And we all keep losing. And every night we say, let's play Monopoly again. Mm. And we do it again. Because he's, he's, he's the banker with the money. Yeah. And so, we just keep doing it. And that's what has to shift. That's what has to shift. That's why I built a studio. That's mm -hmm. why, that's the thing about the, it's like the double standard thing to get back to what we were talking about earlier. It's like, that's something. It is real. It exists. It ain't going anywhere. Right, right. What can we do to move off it? I, I don't know that I can play that game anymore. Something well, feels very, very well, the obvious solution it. is for us to have our own mechanism, our own platforms, uh, indeed our own Google. Uh, because uh, Truth Social, which is, yep. the, which is the, the platform that Donald Trump has built, uh, is now not going to be carried on Android. Google. Oh, they're yeah. booting them from Android. Yeah. That's and interesting. That's almost forty percent of the of the market. So he won't even be able to speak to a lot of people. That really, you know, I'm not a. I'm like you. I'm, I'm mostly a libertarian, as you know. You know, this is where if the government can't ensure that there is some basic ability for companies to compete, right? Then, then I don't even know what the purpose of the government is. Like now that Google has become more important than the government, if they say your store, you will not be allowed to be in the marketplace. That mm -hmm. is the marketplace. Right. And now they're saying you can't be in there. Well, and I gotta say, I, truth was, I was getting good traction on there. It felt real to me the way Twitter used to feel because I got on there a little bit before. Well, this leads uh, us to I another left. very important topic. I can yeah. imagine people watching this live on our live stream going, ask him about this, yeah, ask okay. him about this. What? You just led into it. We talked about Twitter. Yeah. Big story. Uh, on the Joe Rogan podcast, he is interviewing Mark Zuckerberg. No shit. <laughs> no shit. He did it already. Uh, I, I'm, I'm laughing because uh, I'm, I'm tempted to respond in, in kind. My father hated it when I cursed. Yeah. <laughs> hated it, and I used to do it much more freely than I do right now. Yeah. Um, and Once it, in a blue my, moon my, off camera, you'll drop. My, my father used to wince when I when I would curse, and so I worked on it. And now I've got to the point where I don't do it anymore. Yeah. Now you're going no. <laughs> Wait, he did it already? They did the interview already? Okay, did the interview already. Okay. Uh, very long interview. You know, as you know, he's lengthy, lengthy interviews, kind of like I'm this. I'm shocked, yeah. And he, of course, asked Mark Zuckerberg about the Hunter Biden laptop story, which, which, uh, which uh, uh, Facebook and Twitter both suppressed. Twitter uh, didn't even retweet the story on the New York Post, shut down the New York Post's ability to do it. And Facebook also altered the alg algorithm so that far fewer people saw it than otherwise would have. Yeah. And Zuckerberg 
says, and I'm paraphrasing, this okay. is very important how he phrased it. He said, some people from the FBI came to us or came to some members of my team and said that there's going to be some, wow. some stories that wow. are gonna be dropping pretty soon and it is likely gonna be Russian disinformation and we wanna give you a heads up. They did not specifically say there's gonna be a story about Hunter Biden's laptop, but within days of the FBI coming to uh, Zuckerberg's people, Zuckerberg said that the laptop story dropped. We assumed, he, again, I'm paraphrasing, we connected the warning to the story and that's why we suppressed it. Uh, wow. Rogan followed up by asking, did they specifically talk about the Hunter Biden story? He didn't say it quite that way. He didn't say it quite that well, frankly, he should have. Mm -hmm. I, I was critical of the interview, and I'll, I'll tell you why in a second. Yeah. Um, uh, Zuckerberg said, no, but they told us there's gonna be Russian disinformation as there was in 2016, says the FBI, and we should be wary of that. And so when the Hunter Biden story broke, I thought that's what the FBI was talking about, referring to, so that's why we suppressed the story. Wow. And he admitted, he, Zuckerberg admitted, that they altered the algorithm so that it didn't get the name, same kind of coverage it otherwise would have, and, and, uh, and used the word meaningful, meaning the percentage of people who did not see it was meaningful. So first, let's do so, the... So, so, so just getting back to you about being a libertarian. Yeah. Um, it's one thing for a private company to make that decision. It's another thing for the government to essentially yes. warn you, knowing full well that you're going to take the warning seriously, and so it makes it almost state action now. Right, so at that level, so in essence what you have is the government outsourcing the tyranny. The mm -hmm. government is basically saying, here, it's, it's a threat. If right. they're calling Facebook, there is some level of a threat involved. There's mm -hmm. some stuff coming down the pike that if you promote, you might have some other problems. Right. We might want to audit you or right. all sorts of stuff. It's, right. so, so that's where they are outsourcing the tyranny. They're not stepping on the First Amendment directly. Well, this is sort of like, uh, remember when Saki said over, what was it, was it last summer when Saki said that the government flags certain posts for us? Right. Well, uh, <clears throat> or, uh, you know, we flag certain posts for, for Facebook, I right. should say. It's like, this has been happening for a long time. So di when did this happen, this Zuckerberg interview? Is this the last couple uh, of days? Or? Last, last 10 days, maybe. Last 10 days. Mm -hmm. So are people hopefully realizing what's going on here? Like, are, are we you know, able again, to again, break our, through our, to any our, of our the robots, side, the our, NPCs? Our, our side, meaning the non-woke side, is reacting exactly as you, as you have just done. Surprise, but, surprise, but on, man. But the others aren't saying a whole lot. Uh, because there was a study that was done by Media Research Group and found that 16% of Joe Biden voters say had they known about the Hunter Biden laptop story, they would not have voted for Biden. So it clearly altered the election, but something altered the election even bigger, and one of the reasons I was critical of Joe Rogan's interview is he didn't bring this up. You know about the 400, $419.5 million that Zuckerberg spent of his own yeah, money the to, yeah. to, to bring out uh, Democrat turnout. Yeah. Uh, Molly Hemingway wrote a book about yep. it called Rigged. I'm sure you talked I, to her. I saw her right before, uh, right before I went up. Right, I interviewed her, yep. and um, uh, Citizens United did a documentary about it. Uh, it's still online, you can watch it for 40 minutes. We talked about how Zuckerberg strategically went to election officials in places where there were a lot of Democratic votes, uh, Cleveland, uh, Detroit, uh, Atlanta, Philadelphia, to gin up Democrat turnout. Now the idea was that he was being a good government guy uh, and some money was spent for Republican turnout as well, but like maybe 10% and 90% right. for Democrats. So clearly he did it to tip the scale in favor of Democrats. Rogan did not mention it. In a two hour interview, did not raise it. That's interesting. How do you do that? How do you, how do you not have Mark Zuckerberg in front of you yeah. and not bring up, it's like, Am I talking to the Wright brothers, not, not <laughs> mentioning airplanes, or Henry Ford, not mentioning cars, right. or O.J. Simpson, not mentioning he killed two people. Maybe that, that, I kind of took that in a dark place. At least took a ride in the Bronco. I, took that, like I that. took that in a dark place, didn't yeah. I? But how, but how do you not ask him about the $419 million of your own money that you spent on the election in 2020? How do you so, not so ask first that? Off, he I'm didn't gonna, ask it. I'm going to go back and watch it for sure. The only thing that I can say slightly in Rogan's defense on this, which just as an interviewer, and you know this too, Sometimes over the course of an interview, you're doing something, and especially if it's live and you don't edit, that you want to get back to something and it just doesn't present itself. That's not really like a full-throated um, excuse or something, because he, he should have hit on that. But, but putting that aside, you know what's interesting about this is, remember, Jack Dorsey from Twitter, 
once the New York Times said that the Hunter Biden laptop was real, Jack Dorsey basically, who doesn't work at Twitter anymore, so when he was running it, he did all the bad shit. Now he doesn't, uh, pardon my French, yeah. he did all the bad stuff. He said we shouldn't have done uh, it. But, but now that he doesn't run it anymore, he says we shouldn't have done it. Right. Now, years after the election result that Zuckerberg wanted, now he can kind of sort of admit there was government pressure to do something. Um, and it's like, how many times will we continue to play Monopoly with a bunch of people who own all the hotels on Park Avenue mm -hmm. who we know are rigging the game? Right. That's the question. Yeah. I guess, I, maybe that's, that's my number one sort of public-facing question. But, 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 but again, forward. getting back to Rogan, um, and I and I have respect for him. I think yeah. he's a good interviewer, and he's clearly very popular. Did Rogan put you on when you were running? No. Mm -mm. Years ago, he reached out to me to have me on the show. We went back and forth, and never happened. But since then, I've heard heard nothing. So, um, I, I'm digressing. Yeah. Um, when I I just did a, a two hour interview with um, C-SPAN, and somebody called up, and black guy, and he said, uh, "I watch your career." why is it you never go on this show, or this show, or this show? Like I can just show up, knock yeah. on the window, and say, hey, interview me, yeah. uh, and, he's, and, I, and I mentioned Charlemagne the God. I was on a plane once, and a guy named Bill Bellamy, he's a fellow, oh, yeah, fellow, fellow comedian, yeah. um, meaning you, fellow comedian, yeah. uh, was sitting next to me, and we started talking, and after a while he realized that I wasn't an ogre, and he said, you know, I have a very good friend, Charlemagne the God, uh, have you ever done his show? I said, no, I'd love to do his show. He said, let me, let me, let me set that up. We exchanged information. And I've talked to him twice since then, Bill, and nothing's happened. Um, so your point is my, my that po this my is point not is for lack of effort, oh, right? No. This is what this is the criticism that guys like you and I'd be I, delighted to go on and, The View. I'd be delighted to go on Charlemagne the God. I'd be delighted to go on Al Sharpton Radio Show. Invite me, I'm there. You went on Mar once, but many, many years ago, right? I haven't been or, on Mar's show in years because I lit him up when he called himself a libertarian. Right. You, can go on, you can go on YouTube and look at it. And I said, Bill, you're not a libertarian. You support higher minimum wage. You support a uh, Obama, Obamacare style healthcare system. Uh, you don't mind raising taxes. I said, the only thing you're a libertarian on is are drugs. You're mm -hmm. not a libertarian, you're a libertine or a liberal. I don't know what you are, but you're not a libertarian. He was he furious. He was not happy with that. I, that was on uh, Politically Incorrect or Real Time? Do you it remember? was on my radio show. It was always on your radio show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he came on to talk about something else, and I said, before we get started, can we talk about this? And he was livid. Well, and that's the last time I've been on his show. I guess I can uh, say one thing, which is that on, uh, I think it's September 20th or so, 21st, something like that, I'm going to LA. I have to go back right. to LA. Maybe I'll have lunch with you. That'll be the one joyful thing that I do there. Right. Uh, but I'm doing Bill Maher's podcast. So it's two hours, just me and him. And you know, I've been very critical of him in, in a respectful way. I think he's just gotten to the wrong conclusion. I think he's, he's anti-woke, he's anti the gender stuff, he's anti the race stuff. I think he's realizing stuff about COVID. I want him to get to the end of the road, which is, man, you gotta stop voting for the Democrats. You gotta stop pretending to be a progressive. He's done, I, if, if you maybe do that, he can, if, but if I'm gonna that, try he, two he, hours. That's, I got one, two that's hours. one bridge too far, he's done. He's done. I think you're probably right, but I'm going to try it and I'll do it respectfully. And I, I for even for my frustrations with him now, I, I admire the guy. I think he fought for what he believed was a, a good, sane liberalism in the face of this woke stuff. It didn't work. But now you got to get to the end where the end is, hey, Larry Elder's not my enemy. And believe it or not, Ted Cruz and Rand Paul aren't my enemies either. And, sure, we have a different and, view and on the And call out region. these Democrats who are denying elections. Call out, uh, mm -hmm. call out Al Gore. Call out Hillary, for, who's been doing it for four years. Call out Benny Thompson, who's been, who denied the election in, in Ohio. Be, be, be consistent. That's all did, I want. Did you see there was an episode a couple months back, we covered it on my show, where he's going on and on about how great things are in Florida. And he's going, you know, DeSantis kept the state open and he's right. fighting the, the woke stuff and the race stuff and the police are funded, blah, blah, blah. But then he has to couch it in, but I'm not moving to Florida. And it's like, well, what do you mean? So what is it that you're against? Is it just because you really, really love abortion? Which, by the way, we have 15 week ban here. That's three and a half months. That's right. a moderate position. Florida, which is now thought of like this, you know, thought mm -hmm. of as a, as a far right mm -hmm. red state, has a very, very moderate I would argue 15 weeks is far more moderate than eight month abortions that California has or nine month abortions or post birth abortions, mm -hmm. murder. Um, so it's like, that's what I wanna get him to. It's like, wait a minute, if, if you're for all of the stuff that a guy like Ron DeSantis is, is trying to get done, is this really because you're still for the welfare state and high taxes? Have you not, have we not done that yet? Have you not read the Thomas Sowell book? Have you not listened to Larry Elder long enough? And that, that's what I'm gonna push him on. Uh, a few days ago, Biden is at a campaign stop. Uh, I forget barely the, talked about it. I forget the state. 
and he refers to Trump supporters as believers in semi-fascism. That's the word he uses, semi-fascism. And uh, the Is it his Justice Department that's now investigating the former president? Wouldn't that be a form the, the, of the, the, pre the press secretary was asked about this, uh, Jean Kareen, Kareen Jean Pierre. Yes, oh, I missed her. And she danced around it and danced around it and danced around it. And um, they caught Biden going from the White House to the helicopter or something and yelled at him and said, What did you mean by referring to um, Trump supporters as semi fascists? And he said, You know what I mean. That was it. Smiled and said, you know what I mean. This is a guy who, as you know, the reason he was nominated is because at the very least they thought he would bring down the temperature. He promised to do that. Uh, campaign speeches, there's no reason why we can't all get along. There's no blue America, there's no right, red America, there's just us and we can, and referred to Trump supporters as believers in semi-fascism. Well, I mean, that doesn't surprise me. There is literally nothing the guy could say, either meaningfully, intentionally, or unintentionally, or flubbered, or whatever, that would shock me at this point. I mean, they will say any, they need it. They need to believe that a huge percentage of this country, in essence, half of the country, are fascists or evil or Nazis or whatever. And it's like, man, maybe there's no one that I could possibly commiserate. Maybe this is why uh, we do all this so well together. Like, of the, your life, as, as, a, as I always describe you, as a political commentator who happens to be black, your life is a direct example of it's all a lie. When I go to events with you, as I did a year ago, basically this week, and there's thousands of people in a parking lot on a 110 degree day right. cheering for you. Now, a good percentage of them were white, but does that mean that they were white supremacists who were cheering on the black guy because they're so evolved that they figured out how? It's all so incredibly stupid, but, but they have nothing else. What does Biden have to say? What, what could he say to the country? That would make any sense and be honest and truthful. Well, he can't defend himself on crime. He can't defend himself on gas prices. He can't defend himself on inflation. He can't put his underwear on. He can't defend on. himself on, on what he did with, with Afghanistan. They, in my opinion, encouraged Putin to invade Ukraine. Oh, all, is Ukraine all, happening still? It's still going. Is that a thing? It's still going. Yeah? That's still a thing, whatever there, that there's is? A, there's okay. a Ukraine counteroffensive right now as we speak. The Russians have taken over probably the eastern part of the country. Uh, and we're still sending billions of dollars there for, for aid to them. We're still doing the lion's share of that, not, not, uh, not, not the rest of NATO. I'm sure we know where that money's going though, right? We must have, I assume somebody, there's an account with somebody. Where they... Same as we knew where all the COVID money was yeah. going. Yeah, same, same guy is doing that. I mean, I, I didn't think of Ukraine once during this month, but wait, can we just back up for a second on, on uh, COVID just real quick? So there's some states doing some so, something or cities. Um, so, now there's just some something in the- Yeah, there. yeah, uh, yeah. Philadelphia, I believe it is, has reimposed the mask mandate. What's interesting about that is in California, uh, a few weeks ago, a few months ago, uh, one of the counties, Alameda, reimposed the mask mandate. The adjacent counties that are demographically identical did not, which gave us an ideal time to look at this and find out whether or not it's gonna make any difference. It made no difference whatsoever, none. Yeah. But Philadelphia is reimposing a mask mandate. Meanwhile, a third of the Philadelphia kids, K through 12, cannot read at proficiency levels and 20% cannot do math at proficiency levels, but they'll be wearing a mask. But they'll be wearing a mask, that's pretty good. California, yeah. the governor and the state have banned gasoline powered cars effective 2035. And within days of announcing the ban, they urged people with electric cars not to charge them up during during uh, prime time hours Evil. because of uh, because of the stress on the electric grill. On, on, the, on the energy grid. On the grid, on the grid. Yeah. Wow, he is, so, he is so really banning, evil. Banning, so banning, banning uh, any edict to ban cars, gas cars by 2035, within days, another edict to not charge your cars up during certain hours because of the stress on the grid. Larry, I kid I, you, can't make it up. You I can't mean make this, it up. I mean this with love and respect. <laughs> you can't make it up. You, Prager, Corolla, do I know anyone else that's sane in Cali? I must know somebody. Everybody else is gone. You're gone. What are you doing? Shapiro's gone. The, the fact that Elon that man, Musk is gone. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's gone. The fact that that man, Gavin Newsom, has any control over anyone's life, who has systematically destroyed San Francisco as mayor, destroyed California. He wants to be president, obviously. Like he's he wants to push Biden out. It's just all so obvious. Like it's just right. The script is right in front of us. But wait a minute. Ban gas cars by 2035. Ban, 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 ban the, sale, the sale of the new sale, gas, of the sale of new gas, gas cars, cars by 2035. Cars. Yeah. 
as if that were God, these virtue signaling right. buffoons. And now all the Tesla people of LA and Beverly Hills, yeah, as if they're gonna not charge their cars right. when they want to, you know what I mean? Of course not, these are the same people who they, they you know, they're for defunding the police, but not the Beverly Hills police when and, the, and, when the and, mob starts and, getting And on my Rodeo. show, and on my, on my Epic Time show, notice I got that in, Epic Time Epic show, Times, E-P-O-C-H Epic Time, Time show, yeah. I've interviewed an engineer named, Dan, named Ron Stein many times. And he's talked about how these cars are built through fe- uh, fossil fueled power. Uh, the, uh, the ingredients in them, uh, lithium most notably, uh, has to be mined in places like China yeah. and, and Chile, which destroys the planet. And he says the impact of electric cars is worse on the environment than the impact of gasoline power cars. Tucker Carlson did maybe a 10 minute thing on this just the other day where he outlined all of the stuff that it takes to make an electric car and what it does to the environment and how little effect it'll have on the, on the, on, on the climate. And it's the first time I've ever heard anybody do it really in prime time. And it was just masterfully done. Wow. And Tucker still and, has and, a show. And, they didn't try to. <laughs> no, they didn't no. try to lynch him or right. axe him or right. get all the advertisers to disappear. And, and Ron Ron Stein, the engineer I mentioned, believes that it is immoral for people to drive an electric car for all those reasons I mentioned. Not least of which is where they're doing all this mining are places where they use a slave labor, and well, nobody nobody seems to care. So so the pollution takes place. It's not here in California. It takes place elsewhere. Larry, there's a lot of money in China, yeah. and it would be good if the NBA could get that money. You know. Uh, Brittany Griner, speaking of that, oh, remains she in, in, no, she's not, she's still behind bars. She received, I think, nine years. She pled guilty. She apologized and said she inadvertently packed some, like a vape like, thing with, yeah. with THC in it. I'm not yeah. sure what it is. Yeah. And uh, her husband, her, her wife, says that uh, she would be out if it had been LeBron James. So it wasn't really the race card, since LeBron James is black, <laughs> but it's a sex card. It's, it's the sex card. Yeah. I mean, it really is a crazy story. Like, there is a famous, you know, rel- in WNBA, whatever. Mm-hmm. There's a level of fame there. We the, can make the, all the jokes. Don't we slam want. a WNBA because I did. I got a letter from a from a campaign donor yeah. uh, whose daughter works with the league, and she was angry that I had kind of dismissed the uh, the the league. And I said I wasn't dismissing the league. I just said I don't watch it. I don't mean to dismiss the league. When I hit 50 and I'm retiring from Rubin Report, I'm throwing on a wig and I'm going to be in the <laughs> WNBA. So you know, I'm not dismissing that. Um, but if you really think about this story, so she, okay, so she has a vape pen or something, she's in Russia. And, and by the she's way, the state, fa- and by the, by the way, she had left Russia, um, and from the time she left to the time she came back, the State Department put out a statement and said, don't go. Right. Uh, for fearing that maybe people like her would be nabbed for political purposes, uh, and the Russian would, Russia would use it because it, it, of Ukraine. So really, she went anyway, yeah. and she brought the stuff, and apparently, she, well, she did plead guilty, and her lawyer wrote a letter and, of apology, so she did apparently break the law. What Biden has done, however, uh, after initially refusing to do it, is offer her uh, in exchange for a guy we have in custody, a Russian guy who tried to kill Americans, who was an arms dealer. And a lot of the uh, uh, foreign policy people that I watch on Fox say this is an outrageous trade, Mm -hmm. uh, that you have to trade like for like. And she, A, violated the law. She wasn't a political prisoner. uh, But B, what we're giving up is is too much. And so, so far, nothing's happened. It's interesting because it's it's a huge catch-22. To me, you get your citizen back, but I get why it's not as simple as that, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, like you do that and then you encourage them to kidnap people, right? It's why you don't negotiate with terrorists Mm -hmm. because if if you have this huge asset that it sounds like we have, and she's not of national security interest, but she's right. but she is a citizen of the United States. That right. matters. To do an asymmetrical trade sort of doesn't make sense, but you but you do want to get your citizens back. So let put aside the policy. And, and by the way, she's not the only one that that they have. They have other citizens, uh, other Americans who have been in captive longer. What, what's interesting though to me is that she, she is a black lesbian public person. So this is very high. But, but I had never heard of her until this happened. I bet you hadn't either. No, I hadn't. But and, and that's but, one. That's one of the problems. When they made her a call celeb, it increased her value as a token. That's for interesting. The, for the for the Russians. So okay. The, all right. So you have a black lesbian. Let's just put it that. Mm-hmm. She, that that's a fact. You have a black lesbian. Mm-hmm. The, these, this is what the the hierarchy of the oppression Olympics puts at the pinnacle of this thing. In essence, is is a black lesbian, right? She's oppressed by her skin color, she's express, expressed by her gender and her sexuality. And and she did not stand for the, for the national oh, anthem man. during, dur- she, during WNBA oh, games. Oh, lordy, lordy, she's got the whole package. You would think that everyone would be fighting to free her, that the left would be going bananas, that mm-hmm. Biden would be bending over backwards to do it because this is the person he should care about the most. Right. 
Um, but I guess that's just not the case, and they're sort of all BS artists. Yeah, huh? I, bet you, I bet you she would love to hear the national anthem right now. I mean, how crazy. It really does show you how weak the United States is. Like, you could say, I'm pretty sure you can say it plainly, which is that if Donald Trump was president, Brittany Griner would be back already. He would have done something, some sort of deal, well, Donald Trump had or a threat, hopefully we or would, they wouldn't have we, done it. We would not have had the disastrous pullout of Afghanistan, which, yeah. which inspired Putin to do what he did. So this kind of thing wouldn't have happened. You know, it's all, it's all connected. Um, I can't remember where the Pauli Pelosi situation was when you left. The, the what? Paul Pelosi, he got busted oh, for D, DUI. Yeah, he got busted for DUI. That what, happened right before I left. Right, what was the status so when you left? Nothing, you, I think there was like a mugshot of him and I think that was it. Well, the... Uh, or he had never been charged, maybe? Well, or? okay, okay. Well, yeah. he, he was since charged. Okay. Uh, but the video was not released. Now, over the years, I've watched a lot of people get busted, famous people get busted. I remember the... Uh, the manager of Oakland uh, uh, Athletics, Tony La Russa? Tony, Yeah, he got yeah. busted, and and they put out the, the the video of him, you know, mumbling and stumbling. And I've seen other celebrities get busted, and they put out the video, but we never saw the Paul Pelosi video until after the plea deal, and there has been a plea deal. And the deal basically is he gets a some community service, uh, five days in jail, which are suspended because of something or other, slap on the wrist. He also, by the he way, he does have to live the rest of his life with Nancy Pelosi, which is a certain type of punishment. <laughs> we also found out, though, that when he got busted, he produced. He, he's fumbling. He can't do any. He can't. He can't. He, he won't take a breathalyzer. Yeah. He produces a card oh. that you get if you donate a hundred thousand dollars or more to the police, oh. and flashed it. And um, it appeared to be not a bribe, but yeah. but I, I'm, I'm. He also he also said I'm a high profile person. He said that and try to get a pass, and they didn't give him a pass. The cops didn't. Yeah. But the DA claims that she did it by the book, uh, but a lot of us, meaning on our side, believe she did not do it by the book, and, that, and that the uh, video was not released the way it often is on other people. And Larry, has there been a theme d of double, double standards? standards. Yeah. Has there been a theme of they can do it, and they'll always do it, and they'll always get away with it, and we do have to point it out. It's important to point it out and note it and mock it and the rest of it, as I said earlier, but it won't stop it. So if you have that side doing that, you know, that, that chaos and that endless lie, this, this right. nonsensical endless lie that's always existing here, to me, you can be part of it at some level, but you gotta extricate yourself and you gotta go do other things. Again, that, that really is, it's where I've been at for a long time. But by, it's, by the way, it wasn't a minor fender bender. There was a substantial amount of damage. Uh, Pelosi could have killed somebody and the person that he, that he, whose car he struck, on the video, he's speaking Spanish. Uh, I have no idea what he's saying, um, and I don't know whether he's in the country even legally. My suspicion is, I could be wrong, that he was an illegal alien, and that's one of the reasons why um, uh, Pauli Pelosi was able to get off so easily. This had been you, let's say, he ran into, uh, and uh, it was his fault. Uh, I think you would have made a big stink out of mm -hmm. it. What's an illegal mm -hmm. alien gonna, gonna say? Right. But, but again, I'm not sure whether the guy was an illegal alien. They haven't been determined one way or the other yet. Right. Well, you would think that'll break at some mm -hmm. point, right? I mean, they'll do their darndest to hide it if, if he's illegal. Yeah. Um, First Lady, Dr. Jill Biden. Yes, yeah, so she's still a doctor Test, performing tested, those surgeries. Tested positive for COVID-19 again. She's got it too. Yeah. Despite being a doctor. Despite being a doctor. Jeez. Are they still like, they're still trying to get everybody vaxxed and... All of the stuff, it's all like they still, so Fauci's on his way out, that's great. Speaking of, uh, of, 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 uh, of uh, Fauci, uh, Joe Rogan, also getting back to him for a second, uh, he had uh, a guest on, uh, think of him, him in a minute, and um, they were talking about COVID shutting everything down and how the uh, organization, the CDC, mandated this, that, and the other. And now we're finding out that the lockdown bad idea, finding out that uh, regular immunity, uh, natural immunity is stronger, uh, finding out that the vaccines for young people were probably pointless because young people don't get it. And Rogan said, when asked, what's, oh, he's talking to Aaron Rodgers, uh, oh, the, the quarterback of the, yeah. quarterback of the, uh, the Packers. Yeah. And Rodgers says, what's the answer? And, and uh, Rogan said, vote Republican. Oh, he did. He so did. he's really getting there. So his, he sure red, his red pilling has been really nice. Yeah. 
because it, it's taken him a while. Let's not forget, this, is a, this guy was a, bur you know, he was very conflicted about his views, I think, in a lot of ways. And everyone is to some extent right. when you're waking up, because the guy was a Bernie supporter who then left California for tax purposes. So it's like, you got to piece these things together, man. <laughs> you can say, I'm a nice Bernie supporter socialist, and I like all but, this stuff. But I don't want to pay taxes. But I don't want to pay taxes, so I'm moving to Texas. Mm -hmm. So his, you know, this is this is sort of similar to right before I left. He said that he was going to vote for DeSantis. So that's great because he he's got real influence. And if you think about it, there's not a lot of people that could move politically, right? You got your people that are hardcore Republicans, let's say, and hardcore Democrats. I think the sliver of people that could move are the disaffected libs. It is the the Bill Maher, Rogan esque. It's those libs that are just like a couple years maybe behind where I was. That those are the ones that can still be shifted, let's say. So that that's great to hear. Um, speaking of, of Rogers, he was very critical of the NFL, and he called him stooges for mandating all of this, uh, all these rules and regulations. Good. Um, Djokovic, Novak Djokovic, yep. uh, is not going to be playing in this year's U.S. Open because he refuses to get vaccinated. They're still doing, They're still that. doing that. Now, you can go and watch the U.S. Open not being vaccinated, and if you're born in America and have not been vaccinated, you can play. But because he is a foreigner, and because the CDC requires anybody coming in from out of the country to be vaccinated, he cannot play in the, in the U.S. Open. Is that right? That, yeah. That's still a thing? Still that a if thing. You, yeah. So right now, if you were to come to the United States on vacation, you have to be vaccinated? I think so. Jeez. I think so. The vaccine, which uh, will stop and or prevent the spread of COVID until it doesn't. We're on, we're on tennis. Um, Serena Williams yeah. has announced this is her last tournament, huh. U.S. Open. Uh, she played her first round, she won, and the stadium was packed. Uh, second round, she won, just, uh, I think it was yesterday, yesterday the day before, and the stadium's packed. And she is now getting the kind of treatment that I recall, it um, uh, wasn't John, Mac John Mac McEnroe, but another uh, major player. Oh, uh, Connors, Connors, Jimmy Connors. Connors when he, when yeah, he, I remember Aaron, that, 92. Aaron, Aaron, Aaron Crickstein, remember yeah, that? Yeah. And he went pretty deep into the thing. Yeah, 30, I think that 30, was 92. If 39 I'm years old. Yeah. She's older than he was. Oh, is that right? Yeah, he's, she's 41, I think. Yeah. And it's she's getting the same kind of reaction. Oh, so that's pe nice. People are going nuts. That's nice. You know what's funny about her is you've seen the interview with her and Letterman about men's and women's tennis. There's an interview, it's from about, I don't know, maybe eight years ago where she's on Letterman and talk, and he's asking her, you know, could you beat a guy, could you beat, um, you know, Federer or one of these guys? And she's like, men's and women's tennis aren't even the same sport. Right. They would crush me, it wouldn't last 10 seconds. Yeah, I think she said the top, the, the 100th guy, 100th man right. could, be, could, be, could beat the best woman. Right, yeah. so I guess she's a misogynist. Uh, Nancy Pelosi announced her desire to go to Taiwan. Oh, there is a God. fear right now that China is going to invade Taiwan. Right. China well, has always had a one China policy and believes Taiwan is part of China. Yeah. But Nancy Pelosi announced her attention to go to Taiwan. Uh, and some members of the White House apparently did not want her to go, but she went anyway. And there was some controversy before wow. she went, and the feeling was once you say you're gonna go, just because China, and China puts out some statement, they were very angry about it. Once you say you're gonna go, you can't let China yeah. right. d dictate who goes and who doesn't go because we've had government officials going to Ch going to Taiwan for years. Right. So so uh, Pelosi went and came back, and now a couple of Republicans are going. But there's a real fear right now that China is about ready, this close to invading Taiwan. I mean, that's that's like world altering stuff. People, right. I don't think people fully understand the ramifications. And, and if if China does invade Taiwan, what should we do, if anything, is my question to you. I think, this. I mean, this is mostly where my libertarian side, side says we can't do much. We can turn some screws on some mm -hmm. economic stuff. You know, I'm not a big tariff guy. Right, like, I, right. I, I, there's not that, like, we can't get into a military confrontation halfway across the world, um, even though I absolutely believe that Taiwan is entitled to being a sovereign nation and mm -hmm. all that stuff. I don't know, what, what do you think? What do you think? I mean, well, I certainly don't think we have the more, with this buffoon as president and, and Nancy Pelosi and the rest of these clowns, it's like, we don't, we don't have the moral authority, nor, well, the, nor the sort of technical capability to, to lead. The, the, bo the bottom line is, if China invades Taiwan, we're not gonna do anything. Yeah. What are we gonna do? Go to war? Right. Even though there's a treaty that obligates us to do it, we're not gonna do that. 
So it almost doesn't matter what I think ought to happen. We're not going to do it. Yeah. Uh, but I, I do want to comment on what you said about your libertarian instincts. Uh, there isn't any libertarian kind of foreign policy that I know of. Um, a lot of people think libertarians all believe that we ought never intervene in anything. Like I full I, isolation. I, I, I don't that? believe that there's a libertarian doctrine regarding foreign policy that, right. that, that, I, can, that I can determine. Yeah. Although I know a lot of people feel that way. Right. Ron, so it, Ron Paul was a libertarian and, and didn't want to intervene in almost anything. And so therefore people assume that every libertarian feels that way. They don't. I'm not quite sure uh, what the libertarian worldview is. Right. I know what the libertarian worldview is regarding domestic policy, which is government should be small and uh, unobtrusive and um, it will get off my back. I know the main libertarian policy is that if you get 10 libertarians around a table, you're going to argue about uh, Ten driver's licenses for about seven hours. That's the main thing. Growing number of people believe now that the likelihood of taking back both the House and the Senate is not good. There are at least four Senate races. Is not good. Is not good. Uh, House still good. Yeah. But there are four Senate races where the Republican candidate is, is losing. Um, uh, Arizona is one of them. So Blake, Blake Masters is losing yeah. to uh, Gifford's husband, uh, Mark, whatever his um, name is. Ohio. Yeah. Uh, so not, that's JD. Not, not going well. Um, Pennsylvania. Yeah, that's Oz. That's Oz. Uh, and Georgia, Herschel Walker. They're all underwater right now. Not not underwater, but but um, beyond the margin of error. Right. And there's a there's a chance that all four could lose. And Mitch McConnell has now said that um, we should change our expectations. He didn't say it quite that way. And he said it's because of candidate quality, Indicate, <sighs> suggesting that these, these candidates, I think all of them have been backed that's by a Don, Trump Donald, that's Donald Trump. Right. So that's a, that's a McConnell going after yeah, Trump yeah, thing. It looks like it. Well, McConnell, in a weird way, might want them all to lose because if they all won, those are all Trump back candidates. I happen, Blake, I know, I consider him a friend. He's a mm -hmm. good guy. He would join me on tour just like you did. Mm -hmm. um, he would be a great senator and he's a good human being. I've interviewed J.D., um, Oz, it's a little hard to tell like what he really is, and Herschel Walker, I don't know personally, but you know, seems seems like a good guy. But you could see why McConnell, as a McConnell's the ultimate swamp creature, right? So why would he want Trump back candidates that he can't control? Mm -hmm. So you could sort of see that. Um, but does it feel a little bit like a hearing you say that? It sounds a little bit like a media make believe story, like all the Trump people are going to lose, and then everyone will be caught with their pants down it, well, in two it, months. It, it, it's this. It's it's the media happy to watch the Trump people win primaries, mm -hmm. but then lose the general. And that seems to be the kind of thing that people on the left are happy about. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not quite sure what Mitchell's uh, thing is. I think what Mitchell's doing is saying, don't blame me if we don't take back the Senate. Right, interesting. I mean, look, it's September 1st. The election is still, you know, two, two weeks and, or two months and a week away, basically. So anything can happen. I, I wouldn't get too worried about that. But are generally, is, is the feeling still that, that the House will be taken back? Yeah, and yeah. Although, like, although they, they gotta go, Sarah, the Sarah, just Sarah gotta Palin go. lost her race uh, for the House. It's an unexpired seat, but she's gonna run again uh, in November uh, for the full seat. Uh, but she lost the seat that would be held from now until November, but she's running again in November, but she mm -hmm. did lose. What do you, th the general I asked you at the beginning when you told me about the Trump thing, um, wh what do you feel like the general temperature of the country is right now? Does it feel crazier than it felt sort of a month and a half ago? No. You know, no. It's, it's hard to imagine yeah. that things ever get, that the pressure release ever valves off so that the temperature goes down, but does it seem, or does it seem roughly the same? Well, here, here's my thing. When, when people were saying it's a slam dunk, we're going to take back the Senate and the House. I never felt that way. The reason I never felt that way is because anything that yeah. Joe Biden does, if he expels gas in the pantry, oh, it smelled like perfume. <laughs> so he signs this bill, this skinny uh, Build Back Better bill. Yeah. He does the student debt thing. Uh, and these are called Republic uh, Democrat victories by the media. Uh, one of my friends is a guy named Tim Grossclose. He's a professor um, at uh, George Mason University. He used to be at UCLA. He wrote a book called Left Turns. We talked about this before. Mm -hmm. And he tried to quantify the effect the left-wing media has on votes. And based on some experimentation, his conclusion is that left-wing media gives the Democrat 10 points out of the gate. And so anything that happens between now and the election time that is perceived at all beneficial for Joe Biden, as when there was a 0% inflation increase in July, as the gas prices are coming down a little bit, 
um, they're going to call this <laughs> right. His plans, his plans are working. They dropped sixty yeah. percent. It's like, well, right. but they had gone up two hundred and fifteen percent before that. But that, you know, it's a, I wrote about this in my last book. I mean, this is a little bit like Plato's The Cave. If you if you just exist in the cave and that's all the information that you have, and that's what a lot of people have, and that still is our job is to keep breaking the the ice that exists around people, that all of the nonsense that they have been lied to and lied by. It's why that video that you and I did way back when, when you, when you smacked me senseless, when I didn't even know, uh, you know, we didn't know each other personally at that point. Um, it's why that video has now been seen probably, it, could, it might be 50 million times the amount of ways it's been cut. And, and people saw me breaking out of the ice and that's what we gotta keep doing. There is a video of Governor Gavin Newsom at the White House uh, this is when Biden was out of the country. Yes, I saw that. That was right before I left. Okay. Yeah, I mean, and the speculation is, as you pointed out, that yeah. uh, that yeah. Newsom may run for off. And I want to talk to you a little bit about that because yeah. let me tell you what I think is going to happen. The Democrats are stuck with Kamala Harris. I mean, stuck with her. The reason she was chosen because she she clicked all the boxes. She tried to run for president, and the scuttlebutt is that her numbers are so bad they're under Joe Biden that they have to drop kick her. Are you kidding me? Democrats are the most loyal part of, uh, blacks are the most loyal part of the Democratic base, and black females are the most loyal part of that. And I read a lot of black media, uh, publications like The Grio, and when Kamala Harris was mocked for her cackle uh, and for her doing nothing about determining the root causes of illegal immigration, uh, they reacted with, that was trivial, the reason they're laughing at her is because she's a black female, and Joe Biden's giving her crappy jobs, and how dare they supplant her with a man, mm -hmm. especially a, a white man. And so my feeling is that if Kamala Harris wants the job, and she does, if they drop kick her, black females will be livid, and they are important in the Alabama, Georgia, and South Carolina primaries. Almost half of the Democrat voters in those primaries are blacks. You think they would they, be? They, they will be so angry, they will sit home. They won't vote Republican, but yeah. they'll, they'll sit home, yeah. which will ensure the defeat of the Democrat nominee in 2024, no matter who we put up against him or her. Man, so, you know, so, so they're stuck with her. It, it's, a, it's a good example of why making a deal with the devil rarely works out, because they made a deal with the devil with her, right? You take this mentally compromised, completely <laughs> swamp-ridden, 47-year politician in Biden, who everyone knows is nothing of what he used to be, you throw in the, the diversity check with her, because that's all she was. I, I don't mean that because I care about race or gender, but it's simply the truth. She was polling at zero. You know this, Larry. She was polling at zero in her own party when she dropped out of the race, right? Well, well she, she, was she polling did, at zero. She, she dropped out before the first contest. Yeah. Yeah. She did what she do? She did one or two debates where they they the media loved her. The media loved her. But remember when Tulsi really smacked her she down? She never recovered from she, that. No, so she has no real support. But you make a deal with the devil. The deal with the devil that the Democrats made is, oh, we can we can and it's like, who is this? I'm not totally mm -hmm. sure. Is it Clinton somehow still, or is it Obama right. or whatever? But the, the deal was basically, we're gonna have this mentally compromised President Joe Biden that will appear to be a moderate, but will usher in all the lunacy. Then we're gonna bring in this black woman that if you criticize her, you're gonna be considered a racist or a misogynist. And then I don't think they thought he was gonna break down this quickly. I think that that's the, I don't think they the care. fly in the ointment. I don't, I don't know, I don't, I don't think they care. I don't think they care. They wanted him to go across did the finish what he had line to, do. to make sure that Trump did not win. After that, we'll figure out. So what do you think they're going to do? They're going to they're going to run Kamala Harris. They have no choice. So you think Biden? I'm still I still Biden, two Biden, years into this thing. I, I Biden still is would not, be shocked. Biden if he, is not, he's not going to make it to Thursday. Yeah, yeah. The question is what happens in 2024, and the answer is they are stuck with Kamala Harris. They cannot get rid of her. Uh, they will if they try to do so, it will be perceived as both sexist and racist, and black female voters will simply stay home, and, and they can't afford so it. You so you run they're, they're stuck Kamala with her. Harris yeah. and Gavin Newsom, the ticket from hell. Well, I'm not sure about Gavin Newsom. Right. Uh, two people from California, two left-wing people from California, I don't think that that's gonna work. Mm -hmm. um, but at the top of the ticket will be Kamala Harris if uh, Joe Biden does not make it to 2024, and I don't see how he can. Right, did anything else happen in terms of uh, Republicans announcing they were running for president? Has anyone no, announced? No, no, the, the, the scuttlebutt was that Trump would, would announce. Right, so I guess that then, just then, threw then, everything. Then the Mar-a-Lago raid, raid happened. I'm not saying he was going to, I'm just saying that raid happened. And so now the feeling is Trump will probably wait until the midterms are over before he announces, but who knows? You know, I just remembered the last time I saw you was not in California. Was it Mar-a-Lago? I saw you at Mar-a-Lago right. for the 2000 Mules premiere. Were you there when the guy fell in the pool? It's pretty great. I heard about it. Okay. No. no. <laughs>
<laughs> the no. guy just having a drink standing on the side of the massive pool. There's thousands of people there out in tuxedos. Guy just takes a spill into the pool. Pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah. It, might, it might have been a plant. <laughs> um, a bunch of companies are talking about hiring freezes. Amazon, Apple, Ford, J.P. Morgan, Lyft, Microsoft, Meta, which is Facebook, yeah. Netflix, uh, StubHub, Substack, Tesla, Twitter, Wayfair, all announcing hiring freezes. Wow. Uh, let me say something about Substack real quick. You know what's you know about Substack, right? I don't. So Substack is where a lot of independent writers are now going uh, because you can basically have your own paywall. So where Locals does video, Substack mm -hmm. does written word. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people have gone there. Uh, as of this morning, I, since I am in the local studios, I can say this: we now have all the functionality, the functionality of Substack on Locals, so you can fully do all of your articles there and everything wow. else. So we're we're really going all in on this. That's why I'm very proud to mm -hmm. be here in the, in the studio that we created and everything else. Well, no, that doesn't surprise me. Well, uh, wait, so is the economy still not going great? Is that still, what you're still telling Still not me? going great. Still but number, inflation still did go up. Still pretty much the number one issue. While we're being self-serving, yeah. my, my documentary, Uncle Tom, yes. was coming out. Yes, wait, it came out in August, right? It came out August 26th. Yeah, oh, just a couple days ago. Yeah. Congratulations. And, uh, yeah. Thank you. And uh, it's available on UncleTom.com. Uh, by the way, we're letting, letting people watch the first one for free on UncleTom.com yeah. because the first one, as you know, when you do a, a documentary, any kind of movie in Hollywood, if you do three times its cost, that's considered to be a hit. Uncle Tom generated 10 times its cost, has a higher IMDb rating than any of the ones that was nominated for the, for best documentary in 2024. You don't say. I don't say. Uh, IMDb rating of 8.4 right now as we speak, uh, Uncle Tom won. And to give you some perspective, those who aren't familiar with IMDb ratings, um, Casablanca has 8.5, <laughs> which is one of America's most beloved movies. So it really yeah. has done well. And right now, uh, there are about 29, 30 reviews of Uncle Tom 2 on IMDb, and, and it's got a 9.9 .9 rating. The reviews have been off the chart, and I've had premieres in Phoenix and in Dallas, one in LA, and people are just going crazy. It, it's, it's, it's Godfather 2. It's, yeah. it's, it's better than the first one. The first one was really good. Oh, I'm thrilled to hear that. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously I'll, I'll promote the hell out of it. And good for you. And that's, that's what we have to do, right? That's not just exposing the hypocrisy. That's then building something new. Here's a new way of looking at this stuff. By the way, speaking of movies, I did watch one. Well, I watched a bunch of old movies, you know, while doing cardio or whatever. Uh, but I did watch Top Gun. I was going to tell you about that. Top Gun is now I think, the seventh it. or eighth highest grossing movie ever. Is that ever. right? Yes. I loved it. Ever. It was. Did you see it? Yes. It was so refreshing. And it didn't hate America. And there was no social justice. And it was about accomplishing something and, you know, melding the past with the future and the present. And Tom Cruise, I don't know what the hell they're injecting him with, but the guy looks pretty freaking good. For his, he's like 87 years old. He looks Who was like his 36. love interest in the first one? What's her name? Uh, 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 Jean Treblehorn. So I don't know. So, yeah. M M McGinnis. Kelly, oh, Kelly. oh, Kelly McGinnis. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. She was asked yeah. why you weren't invited to do this oh, one. I can see the answer and she already. Said, have you seen how I look? Because <laughs> my guess is she's 70 or something, and whatever, well, that's all right. Whatever age she is, same age as Cruz. Right, but, Cruz, but it wouldn't have worked. It wouldn't she have said, have you seen me? That's funny. Wow. It was so refreshing to see a movie that was actually, it's not even that it was pro-America, it just was, it just was real, and it, it like accomplishment, it had heart, it had, it, I liked it more than the first one. Yeah, so did I. I, I really liked it. Yeah. yeah. I, I hadn't seen the first one until I saw the second one. Because I wanted to see oh, what it was all about. I, I saw the first one right before I saw the second one, a few days before, and I went, eh, yeah. it's okay, but. I didn't love the first one yeah. the way everyone did, yeah. So I was, pleasant. but isn't that interesting, like the state of Hollywood, that when something is good, it's, it's shocking to you at this point? If you go to a new movie, or you hear new music, and you go, it's actually good, that there, there's a shock level there, where back in the day, it's like when either one of us were growing up, mm -hmm. right? It's like when you were growing up in the 70s, I'm growing up in the 80s, it's like, Every day there was something new that was great. A new sitcom, a new I, album. I, I, grew, a new... I grew up in the 60s. I was, I was... <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. don't crack. I, I appreciate that. Nice. Yeah, I appreciate that. I grew up in the 60s. But you know what I mean? Like, born, all right, so well, the born, 60s. Born in the 50s. Man, the 60s. So in the 60s, every day there was another amazing song that was hitting number one on the charts. Almost every day, right? Where now it's like anything that's new that's good, you're kind of shocked. You know, when you turn up, you watch, I shut off Top Gun and I was like, wow, I wasn't angry. It actually didn't insult me. I felt it was entertaining, like pretty good. On the Hollywood front, um, John Stewart. 
He's back. Well, he's, he's ba ba back in the news. There, there yeah. was a there was a bill to provide money for uh, members of our armed services who were exposed to toxic substances. Yeah, this is he's been fighting for this right, for a long time. For a yeah. long time, and it's yeah. been held up, held up, held up. Yeah. And there is video of him confronting a uh, black, a, a, a white, uh, white. It doesn't matter what his race is. A, a conservative named Jack. Pro Pro oh, Jack Posobiec. Yeah, yeah, Posobiec. Yeah, I know Jack. And uh, for some reason, Posobiec came to whatever this this event was that Stewart was doing out, outside where he talked about this bill, and they started yelling at each other. And from what I could tell, both of them supported the bill. Both of them supported paying off, paying armed services for being exposed to toxic substances. But Stewart and he just went at it. And my huh. feeling is that what uh, Prosobiec was basically saying is legislation often is, is saddled with a bunch of nonsense and a stripped down bill both sides would, would, would sign up on. And ultimately there was a stripped down bill that both sides did come to agreement on and Joe Biden signed it. But for whatever reason they were yelling at each other over this. Huh. I guess I'm, I guess I would need a little more. Would, did, did I take it a caught fire if John Stewart's yelling yeah, at somebody because yeah. he doesn't and, and yell he at was, people he was, that often? He was interviewed and he talked about how Congress is dragging its feet and these people are dying and and I didn't know that much about the bill. All I, I do know about Congress and know how it works. And oftentimes stuff is vote, voted down because the other side puts on riders and mm -hmm. other stuff, uh, so it's not a clean bill. And so it got voted down because it wasn't a clean bill. Both sides perceived the other side to be playing games, but I knew ultimately it would pass, and ultimately it did. So I'm not quite sure why John Stewart felt the need to yell and scream at this guy because of this, but. Huh, I mean, look, uh, the, the bigger issue, since I don't know all the specifics on that, the bigger issue is they gotta stop tacking on all of this other nonsense right. to all these bills. Imagine if we just had oh, clean bills. Hey, mm -hmm. this is a clean water bill, this is what it's gonna be. It's not also about giving paraplegic lesbians mm -hmm. the right to play volleyball on the moon, which that's coming, I would imagine. <laughs> Are you following monkeypox? Oh, well, does everyone here have monkeypox? Is it, do you got the pox? Well, um, is it Cali big? California, it's, it's huge. It's California huge. Has, scare, has declared a state of emergency over the monkeypox outbreak. It turns out, Larry, you don't from what I've read, 98% of those who get monkeypox are men having sex with men. Yeah. They develop a vaccine for it just like that, though. There's now a vaccine available for it. Like a vaccine vaccine, a vaccine or a vaccine, vaccine like a COVID vaccine? A, a, like, like a COVID vaccine. Oh, so not something that works. I, don't, I have no idea. I just know it was developed real fast. All of a sudden, monkeypox comes out and suddenly there's a vaccine, which kind of surprised me. I believe that but, the last thing I said to my crew before we went off the grid was, uh, when I'm gone, guys, uh, no having sex with random strangers <laughs> in alleyways. And right. that still stands. It's like, if you don't want monkeypox, don't bang a monkey and don't have sex with a whole bunch of strangers. But they, they, did, not, controversial? they, they, they did not ban any kind of outdoor gatherings um, um, among gays. Yeah. And so there is some feeling that the way they're dealing with this outbreak is different than the way they're dealing with other outbreaks. Oh, because of the political correct yeah, nature? Right. Well, you know, I had, uh, well, David Horowitz, who of course you know, I had mm -hmm. David Horowitz on years ago, and he said something really fascinating to me that I think stands to, to your point on monkeypox. He said that when he was in, the New, in New York City in the 80s, uh, and he was just starting to become a conservative, so he, you know, this is a lefty a communist, he's now, he's now starting to become a Republican or whatever you want to call it, that the AIDS crisis is breaking out and they knew where the AIDS crisis was spreading. They knew mm -hmm. it was happening at these bathhouses, right? And right. These, you know, these guys, I mean, this is also why you want equality. If you have people that can only meet in underground bars and clubs and whatever, then it's going to breed a certain amount of promiscuity and whatever. But he said that the Republicans in New York City, because they knew that it was happening at these gay bathhouses, AIDS, that's where it was spreading like crazy, the Republicans wanted to close down the bathhouses. He said that it was the Democrats that wouldn't let it because they said you're homophobes. So the Democrats actually, and this is exactly what you're talking about right. with monkeypox, it's right. the same thing. In the interest of, oh, every, behavior doesn't matter and everyone can live however they want and blah, 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 you actually end up killing the people that you're purporting to protect. Right. So I'm not surprised by that at all. Are you following the Kerry Lake uh, gub gubernatorial race in Arizona? Yeah, well, I've had Carrie on the show. I like her a lot. Um, I, I hope she wins. Um, I was just in Phoenix, yeah. and I was standing at a sign uh, for her, and uh, she had a picture of Trump next to her, and was called Trump Back Candidate. My understanding from talking to people in Phoenix is that many of the signs have been sabotaged, have been vandalized, because she referred to herself as a Trump Back Candidate. As you know, she was a uh, anchor, very popular yeah. for, for years in Phoenix, 
and got out of the business because she felt it was just too one-sided. She couldn't do it anymore. Interesting. So, well, she is a Trump backhanded for mm -hmm. sure, right? right? He has he has officially endorsed mm -hmm. her. And so, did, so, did, so, did, so did my pack, Elder for America. We endorsed her too. Good, good, yeah. good. Mm -hmm. By the way, Larry Elder. I feel like your political future is not, hey. not over. You just have that glow. Well, you know. You know when women get pregnant, there's a glow? You've got the glow. I'm just Well, I'm not pregnant, I'll tell you that. <laughs> um, but I am considering um, doing something down the road. Uh, I, I, I'm not ready to make any kind of announcement, but I am thinking about maybe running for, uh, for a higher office. What's higher than governor of California? <laughs> Head of the penitentiary right, in California. Right, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. So, so I'm gotcha. thinking about it. Right, I feel um, it. I wanted to ask you about. For, for 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 some reason, this is your staff, not me, because because I, I didn't even know about uh -oh, this guy. Uh oh. Kim Kardashian and Pete Davidson have officially called it quits. Could not care less. And whoever put that in the rundown is fired. <laughs> <laughs> Could not care less. Well, I, I, I had to look at to see who he was. He yeah, was a longtime he was, SNL guy. He's been on for eight, 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 eight he years. He smokes a lot of pot or something, yeah. Or he looks his, like he smokes pot. But I did a wiki on him. His father was killed 9 11. His father was a firefighter, charging up the stairs. Wow. He was killed. And he was about eight years old or so. And uh, he says he's never been quite the same. But I had no idea that they were they were together for nine months, which for, for California is kind of a old marriage. Huh. Um, and they've now broken up. Wow. Well,. So that was what you held. You held that one to the yeah, end. Yeah, to the very riveting, end. Riveting, riveting. Yeah. But by the way, uh, the Kardashians have said something about his um, equipment, the size of his, his, his equipment. Oh. Uh, for some reason, that's been in the news. I don't know. I asked my girlfriend about it. She, she knew about it. Good or not good? You know. <laughs> Depend, depends. <laughs> we are still sending yeah. money to Ukraine. Another $5.5 5 Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Absolute nonsense. I, I interviewed Rand Paul right before I went off the grid mm -hmm. a couple days before. Rand Paul? Uh, Rand Paul. Mm -hmm. And all he all he said was, hey, we just want some, he's like, I'm not voting for it, but you know, could we at least get some numbers on this thing? Can anyone break it down? What mm -hmm. is this money going to? Is there any tracking of any of it? Yeah. They don't track any well, of it. It's right a before, giant slush Well, right before fund. the invasion, there were a bunch of articles in the New York Times about how corrupt Ukraine is yep. and how they have all these oligarchs who spend yep. all the money. Then all of a sudden, uh, it was a great country with this wonderful democracy, and we have to get behind them 100%. Yeah, and we're still sending our celebrities there to take pictures right. with, uh, what's his name? Mm -hmm. and, oh, God, it's so uh, we talked earlier about Tulsi Gabbard. Yeah. Um, what do you think her future is? She sat in for the Tucker Carlson show recently, did a Ooh. good job. Yeah. Look, first off, I like her a lot. I mm -hmm. like her personally. I know her a bit off camera. I've interviewed her several times. I, she is a good human being. And uh, just imagine- Why is I, she still a Democrat? Well, just imagine had the Democrats at the end, when, when, Bi when they handed it to Biden mm -hmm. and they made all the backdoor deals and gay Pete and everybody, when they all left after su right before Super Tuesday, imagine if Tulsi, who stayed in, because she's not part of the machine, imagine if Biden had been like, you know what, I'm going to go with this Tulsi girl, and she's uh, actually an active member of the military, and she loves America, and she's not about identity politics, and blah, blah. Think how different the country could potentially be. Her sitting in for, for uh, Tucker, I don't know that, that, that she wants to be a TV star in that regard, mm -hmm. but I think she's an important voice, and I think she's, she is a crossover type person. She's the type of person that I referenced earlier, the sort of disaffected liberal that is basically ready to vote Republican, but doesn't, they either don't want to say it publicly or they don't know how to quite get there. She's the type. It's why I'm always putting the pressure on Mar. It's like there's a couple people that can help lead these people to the promise, promised land. Maybe that's sort of what you did a long time ago. It's mm -hmm. what I've done over a couple of years, right? And and people need somebody to kind of ma map it for them. So when Rogan, who is not a traditional Republican, he is not religious or whatever, when he, you know, he's a pot smoking, mushroom eating, ayahuasca doing, <laughs> MMA fighting, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's like when he says, hey, I could be conservative. It's like there's something there. There's something powerful there. Tulsi, that would be great. So I, I don't know. I don't know that. But that's interesting. That's interesting. Uh, let's let's finish up with okay. with uh, with COVID. Uh, the superintendent of schools in excuse me, the mayor of D.C. says unvaccinated students are banned from in-person learning. That's Muriel Bowser. Yeah, I Muriel believe Bowser, her name yeah. is. Don't like who's her. Very, who's very unhappy about the busload of illegal aliens. Yeah, <laughs> that we ship them. You know, we <laughs> ship them from Florida. The governor of Florida and Texas have been shipping up there. Yeah, pretty sweet. But, but what a great but, policy. So, so you enter the country without being vaccinated. That's okay. Yeah. But you can't go to school if you haven't been vaccinated. I mean, that's just, it's profoundly evil. 
Um, I think you could argue in that they frame everything through racism. You probably could argue it's racist mm -hmm. because there's a certain amount of black people who don't trust the system well, and, and for a, good and reason. And a larger percentage of blacks are not being vaccinated yep. uh, than, than whites. Oh, and, so she doesn't want young and, and, black and, and kids going to school. Kind, it's, kind of, it's kind of interesting because the left, of course, tells blacks that they are victims of systemic racism while telling them to trust the government when they promote this vaccine. And so you're shocked that a lot of black people are, are skeptical. The government is an evil, systemically racist patriarchy, and it just needs your money to get more done. Mm -hmm. That's the thing with the government. That's the thing with the government. Uh, and uh, these kids, again, are denied a whole year of in-person education, a whole year. Uh, there was a study done uh, a few years ago, 85% of black eighth graders, 13-year-old 13, 13 people, uh, cannot read or do math at proficiency levels. And they lost a whole year of in-person education and suicides have gone up in the black community, depression's gone up, drug abuse has gone up. We think child abuse has gone up. I say we think because we don't know because yeah. the number one way of reporting that is teachers when the kids go to school. They didn't go to school for a whole year, so we don't know. We assume the other things went up. Why wouldn't that go up as well? We got work to do. Uh, who is it that says we got a country to save? There's somebody I, 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 I know I think the great Aldersky says that. Somebody that I know says And when I was that. running for governor, I was asked about vaccine uh, mandates, and I said, I've been vaccinated because of my age, because I've got underlying uh, things, um, high blood pressure, among other things. Um, but I don't believe that young people should be vaccinated. I think that young, healthy people are not likely to get sick, not likely to get really sick, not likely to go to the hospital, and not likely to die. CNN interviewed me for about a half hour on all of this, and they played <laughs> two minutes of what I said, and they didn't snip it up, but they played what I said, I said what I just now said. And then Joe Johns, the correspondent, said, but that's not true, according to the CDC, blah, 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 blah. Now it's coming out that everything I said is, was accurate. Man, the, they just, they lie and lie and lie, and we know they're lying, and they know they're lying, and they know we know they're and lying. And what they've done to the economy, what they've to done lie. to learning, what they've done to businesses, about a third of all the restaurants in California are now gone forever. And most of them owned by mom and pops, black and brown people, the people that they claim that they care about. You don't have to go back to California. <laughs> We're here in Miami, man. I got a great real estate agent. What are you doing? Stay here with me. Come on, man. They probably won't let me back in. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Larry, I thank you for uh, for doing this. This was perfect, absolutely I appreciate perfect. It. You are you are a true pro. I said to my guys when we were going through the list of who could bring me back. Well, I, I appreciate said, it. Who is a pro? Do we and, know and, any and professionals? As, as I'm doing this, as I say again, it, it's there's a lot of pressure because I've got to give you the facts so you can respond properly. As opposed to when we're done, you go. Elder said this. That's not that's not what happened. The, the Mar-a-Lago thing in particular. Yeah. It's got a lot of angles to it, a lot of wrinkles to it, and uh, I'm trying to give you the exactly what happened so you can respond properly to it. Larry, I thank you very much. My pleasure. Uh, I should also note that I'm going to do a Locals exclusive live stream to talk a little bit more about the personal stuff, the parenting. And did I even say my son's name? Did I even say it? You said Jason. Uh, Justin. Justin. Did I say Jason? I think that might be the other one. Okay. Maybe you've <laughs> Justin revealed Jason, too much. All right. I think it's Justin. Justin. Uh, but yes, where's the camera? Or I'll just talk to you. Um, yeah, I'm going to do another Locals exclusive live stream, rubenreport.locals.com at uh, 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Eastern, so in just a little bit and take a little break. I'll even buy you lunch, and then you're going back to Cali. Going back. You sucker. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Somebody has to do it. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. They're not going to chase me out. We'll continue.